They never got an official yes or no from it. Basically, if you just look at this list, there's a couple of guys you've never even heard of until today. Um, Brandon Silvers, uh, Lewis Perez, Aaron Murray, or AAF, you know, quarterbacks. Uh, out of all three of them, Perez and Silvers are the best. Um, but I would love to switch Perez to L.A., and put Car- or put Cardell in L.A. and put Prez in D.C. But he's a solid quarterback. He won't um, he won't be disappointed. He's a very solid quarterback. I like him. He was good in Birmingham. He had some good plays. Plus Birmingham, in my opinion, I've said multiple times. Birmingham, and Orlando were the two best teams in the AAF last year. Um, no, no hands down. Whoever placed him in the West was going to lose. So I like Lewis Prez in L.A. Uh, interesting, <laughs> to say the least. Hey, so you know, no good live stream is without their problems. So uh, the audio is off for the first chunk of that. <laughs> but we're good uh-huh. now. Okay, the chat is saying the audio is good now. This is why I need to make sure I'm paying attention to the chat here. So thanks, okay. everybody, there. Uh, but I think we heard your spiel on Luis Perez. But just to kick things off real quick, uh, just to kind of do the, the intro again, sign everyone up. We're doing some XFL live draft coverage. I don't know if we're going to be here for the full day, but... We're going to be here for a couple hours. I'm here with my man J Dash from the XF Podcast. Uh, if you subscribe, your name will show up on the screen. But also make sure you subscribe to the XF Podcast as well. Uh, I'll actually, I, I think I need to update the description to put your link in there. But I will do that here in a second. Otherwise, Google it. Look it up on uh, YouTube, XF Podcast. The good stuff, up and coming. We're going to have a good time. We have all the Tier 1 scrolling at the bottom when we're running down the list. Uh, we kind of kicked it off. Landry Jones expected in in Dallas. Cardale Jones, he's in D.C. We kind of thought he'd be in L.A. Philip Walker, um, Temple quarterback. Some people were kind of upset because I think they were hoping uh, hoping for uh, Johnny Manziel. But after looking at his resume, looking at some of his highlights, I think Walker's going to be good. He knows that run and shoot offense. And I think we're back where we were. So AAF alumni Luis Perez. Now let's move on to New York. Matt McGlowan. That's another name. That's a name I haven't heard in a while. Uh, but you know what? I think uh, I think he'll work with uh, Gilbride pretty good. I think that'll be all right. Um, Battlehawks. Do you know much about uh, the Battlehawks quarterback? Yes. Uh, I'm not like I'm not. 100% on him, but I know he was in uh, Ole Miss, in SEC t- country. Um, he was very athletic, just like uh, Philip Walker's. But one thing I want to say about Jordan is he is very smart with the ball. Um, unfortunately, he didn't pan out in the NFL uh, because he got cut multiple times. Uh, but he is uh, he's someone where in St. Louis – to the people of St. Louis, you fans out there, you will come to love this guy. He's a uh, he's a dedicated individual. He is a person that is not a person that gets in trouble. Uh, he's a stand, you know. He's what an uh, example of what an XFL quarterback should be, and he does have the ability to shock people in this uh, XFL the relaunch. And I think he will be grasped by the fans of St. Louis. He's that type of guy. He's mobile, great arm, great mobility. He's a, I want to say he's a pocket quarterback that can run. Um, so that's going to be, I think, for the Battlehawks and their type of scheme that they're going to run over there. I think he'll be a great addition to that staff. Yeah, I think so. I think uh, St. Louis is going to be one of those teams to watch. The rivalry, they already have a rivalry built in with Los Angeles. And I think, you know, both of those coaches are pretty, well, at least the, I want to say the, the Wildcats coach is probably the most entertaining coach of the league, uh, just from his stuff on social media. You can tell he has a fun attitude, but uh, I'm looking forward to seeing what Coach Hayes can do with this guy. Uh, on to the last two. So both of these guys, I believe, were AAF alumni. So we have Brandon Silvers for the Dragons, which you called last night on uh, Crosstalk, and then Aaron Murray for the Vipers. And I, I, these they they both make sense to me, right? I think Murray and Tressman are going to work out pretty good. Like I said, Tressman's kind of building that CFL South down there. Uh, I think every coach that he has has been a part of the CFL in one way or another. Uh, and then the Dragons, you know, I, I think Brandon Silvers, this, this was actually one of the names that we had called 
I want to say about a month back that was going to be a tier one. Everyone, knows, you know, the internet being the internet did not like that I said that, but it did, it did end up being true. Uh, but I'm glad, right? But some things here, though, I'm surprised. So we're seeing Brandon Sil Silver's Perez, but no Mettenberger on the tier one. And I'm actually surprised about that. Um, but, you know, this, going back to our conversation yesterday, that could definitely be one of those guys that goes early in the draft, even with these tier one quarterbacks, right? Oh, um, yeah. We mentioned that about uh, Connor Cook as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. And we have, oh, like, we've yeah. gotten B.J. Daniels, Trevor Knight, Connor Cook. Uh, what's the other quarterback that they were showing off on the highlight reels? Um, mm. No, it was Connor Cook. Connor Cook, B.J. Daniels, and Ryan Mallett. Yeah, Ryan Mallett's another one I'm surprised. That one uh, we were talking about possibly for New York yesterday. But well, question. Ryan Mallett was in a showcase in Tampa. He wasn't a highlighted player when the names were released. Mm -hmm. So, But, yeah, uh, Mettenberger... Connor Cook, B.J. Daniels, Trevor Knight, I expect them to be drafted maybe in the first phase as backup quarterbacks. Um, maybe. You don't You don't have to be. You don't, These teams don't have to draft them in the first couple phases uh, to get a backup quarterback. But it's nice to have a suitable backup quarterback just in case a man goes down like we've seen in the fall of the AAF last year. Um, Memphis went through a bunch of quarterbacks. They went mm -hmm. through Matt Mettenberger, they went through Hackenberg, then it went to Brand Silvers, and they had Johnny Mansell. The list keeps going. That was the Memphis uh, Express last year. So a decent backup will be um, will be a good po a good you know a good selection by a team that it's not 100 percent sold on their starting quarterback. So the team that does that will show you signs of. They don't really trust their tier one, but it's it's something. So, yeah, it's interesting. Yep. Thank you, Texas Williams. We 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 know this. Thank you, sir. Yeah, and I, yeah, I don't. This was actually from the XFL's release, so <laughs> I questioned <laughs> if I spelled it right last night, but uh, good, I did. Um, you know, somebody brought up in the chat here as well. Uh, Ryan Mallett's DWI. And yeah, that. That probably did have an effect on the at least the tier one status. Um, although we've seen the league kind of back off of the uh, the you know hiring criminals for however you want to phrase that, right? Uh, but it's definitely not going to help, <laughs> right? The timing's not very good, and uh, quite honestly, if he is still in the draft, it it, it could could potentially. Uh, you know, push him down the list or uh, off it completely, right? Uh, now, looking at some of the guys on the list, we've already seen a couple names, uh, specifically one in particular, Hakeem Nix, off the draft board. Uh, there was a couple other guys I can't remember specifically. I'll look it up here in a second. Uh, um, but it's uh, interesting Hakeem to see. Hunt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, it's interesting to see. This, a new potential problem for the league, right? So right before the draft, at least it seems like the damage wasn't too bad, but that definitely could affect some of these folks. There may be more names uh, that have been removed from this draft pool that we don't know of yet. Um, so it'll be interesting to see what these first first couple rounds look like, right? The, the biggest rounds are really going to be in the first two, three phases, really. Um, and then the, I, I think the interesting one is going to be that open phase, that fifth and final phase, where it's just kind of a free for all. Uh, that's that you know I think we'll probably see a majority of the teams get their backup quarterbacks in that open phase. Uh, but it, you know I, I expect I expect a wide well, receiver. Well, the quarterbacks going are one. eligible. There are that we know officially now they're on the list. Mm -hmm. Each team can have three quarterbacks on roster. Yeah, yeah, especially because they're building 70-man rosters, and they're cutting them down to, what, 55, 56, something like that? Yeah. So there's still, yeah, there's some guys that are going to get cut, and there's going to be probably even more than 20 guys cut from this initial group that teams use these other two supplemental drafts to pick up, right? So we have the draft next month uh, in November, and then we have a third one in January basically to try to pick up on CFL guys and further guys to get cut from the NFL. I think, honestly, we're going to see some bigger names come out of those drafts. 
that's when we'll see these teams start solidifying. Uh, we have team practices coming up, what, in November throughout January intermittently. Yes. Uh, Something that the AAF and the previous XFL never had. I know, I know, and I was getting worried. It looked like they were only going to do that last, uh, that last group in uh, January, the one they're doing in Houston. But luckily, yeah, luckily it seems like the coaches are going to have their hands on these dudes in pretty short order, right? So we're about 30 minutes out from the first pick. What do you think? Running back, wide receiver, what position's going first? Well, if I was the Washington Defenders and you have 12-gauge shotgun for the – or Cardell Jones, I think you need to go running back in here, Bob, because running backs are usually your bell cows of the team. You have a solid running back or solid offensive line to protect the quarterback. And if Cardell Jones wants to make a big-time comeback, like a Tommy Mack type of situation, you need someone with a bell cow. And running backs should go first. I may be wrong. They may go wide receiver. Um, but the running backs, there are a lot of running backs in this draft. There are a lot of good running backs in this draft um, that were are not NFL-caliber type running backs, but they're good enough to be, you know, stars in the XFL. And I can name three of them. Well, well, two of them right off the bat. And huh, let's just say uh, Trent Richardson, even though people say he's not in a lot of these mock drafts, well, he's not going to be mocked. He's not going to be drafted. He's the type of guy that you he's trust. You, you can trust him with carrying the football. He's a big-time back. He's played in big games. And he's a solid running back. And expect that from a team that, from Pep Hamilton's offensive schemes with the Indianapolis coach, uh, coach the Indianapolis Colts, he's always had a good running back at Indy when he was coaching Andrew Luck. So expect him to go running back first pick. I I can see that. Yeah, I think definitely Trent Richardson is first pick worthy in this draft. Uh, he may not get you a lot of yards on on every run, but he's going to get you yards on every run. Uh, and then even more importantly, looking at the um gee what was i gonna say there oh looking at the the point structure the extra point structure he, he, that's at least two guaranteed points every time right at least two probably get the three i don't know about uh, uh sorry one and two points see i don't know about the three because i think that starts at the 10 or the 15 but he can definitely get you from the the one or the five right so i i, I see that Number two pick with the Roughnecks gotta be a gotta be a wide receiver. I think yes, it's and gotta I think, be. And it, I think it's one of the players that the XFL has highlighted, the wide receiver that used to play with Landry Jones in Oklahoma. Um, I expect them definitely go. No, rest of Roughnecks. I thought you said Randy Gates. Jesus. <laughs> now the way to start a lovely Tuesday morning. Uh, I thought you said Dallas for some odd reason. Uh, Houston, you. Uh, that Jim Jones offense, yeah. I think you're going to see wide receivers. And I've, there's another guy still. The guy from Oklahoma that the XFL is highlighting. I do believe those guys that the XFL is highlighting are first-phase guys. Yeah. Yeah, I think uh, June Jones, that's going to be an interesting team to watch. The, the Renegades and the Roughnecks are going to be two kind of they're, – they're going to be the two teams to watch, in my opinion, right, just from the, the – the coaching staffs. I think it's going to be a great feud, and they're both a little bit, a little interesting. June Jones specifically, right? Because from what I remember, he doesn't like tight ends. Not that he doesn't like them, but he doesn't utilize them. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised. I wonder if we just don't get a tight end, <laughs> right? I could see that. Um, so it, it's going to be. This is going to be a fun draft. It, I, I'm hoping in the coming years, and like we mentioned before, it, I think. Really, once the league gets to that third year, we're going to see a lot of changes, hopefully for the better, not the worse, right? Uh, but that third year is really going to – well, really, the second year is the make or break. If they can get past the second season successfully, maintain some some fandom, right, and then renegotiate the TV deals, right? Because everything's really on a two-year basis right now. We have the TV deals, the quarterbacks, and the coaches, so things can go very right or very wrong t 
two years from now. Uh, just looking at the way that the NFL has been promoting WWE, at least Fox, I, I fully expect that we're going to get the same or similar treatment for the XFL. Maybe not as overblown as they are for the WWE, but uh, you mentioned this on Crosstalk the other day. The Super Bowl is on Fox. Uh, the XFL's, I think, the first game, uh, the second game of the first day? Yes, yeah, second game of the first day on Fox, right? So a week prior or a week after the Super Bowl, Fox will be hosting more football with Kurt Menefee, a guy that people watch every Sunday on NFL Fox, right? Uh, I think I think just those few things, at minimum, at minimum, I think we're going to be able to get at least two million viewers per game, at least minimum baseline, right? Couple things to factor: free TV, easy to find channels when it's not. Uh, easy streaming options. I don't know how that fits into the ratings, but it's not like using Bleacher Report or, quite honestly, most people watch the AAF via like bootleg YouTube streams. I, I guarantee you that doesn't happen with the XFL, right? Uh, they're not going to be letting people bootleg their stuff, trust me. Um, so I think just those factors alone, and looking again at the AAF's ratings, even at their worst situations, they were pulling in half a million plus folks watching those games, and that was via the Bleacher Report app or the NFL Network, which is subscriber only. And quite honestly, I can't imagine many people really tune into the NFL Network that often. Uh, but it did help them in one way or another, right? We got their got people's eyes on it. Uh, but our, our broadcast partners, very similar deal. We're not getting paid, but they're taking care of the broadcast uh, costs, which is huge, right? And th these things aren't cheap. Um, I think it's $5 million per game, something like that. I don't know. Uh, but uh, Or maybe $500,000. It, it, there's a five in there, and it's not cheap, <laughs> right? Uh, but we're we're about 20 minutes here, 20 minutes. Um any, you think we'll get any surprises in this draft? Any names that maybe weren't in the draft pool? I, uh, quite honestly, oh, I really don't think yeah. so. I think that if there was any surprise or big time picks, it was going to be the tier ones. Um, there may be some additional signings later, like after the draft, like players sign on, like in case like we saw with. Uh, AAF players that are left from Canada to the AAF signed midway through the year. That's still possible. And I still think that the biggest surprises that were going to happen maybe won't happen until after the Canadian Football League ends oh, and when yeah. the NFL gets close to the playoffs where the half the league, half the teams start you know, getting rid of backup quarterbacks or backup players. So you might have those type of players that are on practice squads right now and the NFL getting their chance to get into the uh, XFL for uh, some playing time and experience. So, yeah, I, I don't see anything major happening today. Just yeah, the regular draft. I agree. I know there was some rumors going around yesterday that the the league may add a hundred more people to the pool, um, but there was all they were also saying that ninety percent of the folks in the in the XFL are going to make fifty five thousand, which very well may be true, but at least our league sources say that that didn't come from them. They had posted uh, a screenshot of what seemed to be a text message with Doug, Doug Wally, but who knows, right? Who knows? I, I'm not going to say one way or the other. I've already had enough drama this week. Uh, <laughs> all right. Uh, but, yeah, I don't think, I don't think there's really going to be any major surprises. Again, probably another big reason that this isn't going to be televised. The XFL, I think, wants their their first impression to be a memorable one. Um, and in, in all honesty, uh, kind of like we were talking about last night, we're probably not going to know, or at least a lot of people aren't going to know a majority of the names in this draft, right? Just your everyday football Joe. But by the end of the season, we will, right? We have to develop those new Tommy Maddox, the he-hate-me's, right? Uh, those people 
people may have known them at the beginning of the original XFL season, right? People, that, hardcore football fans. They, oh, Rod Smart, Tommy Maddox, I remember him. He was drafted by the Broncos. But nobody really knew that they were going to be as good as they were in the XFL because much, I guarantee you much more people know them now than they ever would have uh, it, had they not gone to the XFL, which in turn, uh, they, they ended up getting NFL contracts. I think they both went to the Super Bowl. I can't remember if he hate me. If What was it? He was on the Panthers, so he probably lost. <laughs> uh, but uh, Tommy Maddox, he has that backup Super Bowl ring. Say what you will. I don't have a Super Bowl ring. I want a I Super don't. Bowl ring. <laughs> you know? uh, and you know what? I'd take a XFL championship ring as well. Uh, so I think, like I said, the, like you alluded to earlier, uh, this January draft I think is going to be there's going to be some more interesting names, probably a lot of CFL guys, um, and some more NFL cuts. So, you know, we don't know. We even after today, we'll we'll have a good idea of what the teams look like. But I, yeah, there's there still can be some surprises down the way. Uh, specifically, if too, you know, something to think about. So we we know there's a well, we've heard there's a tier system. We've heard rumors that that may have gone away, or if that's still around. But what would be interesting to see is, so we have the Tier 1 quarterbacks. What if they do have a Tier 4 wide receivers and running back? Or maybe like a you either get a wide receiver or a running back in a tiered category that we have still yet to announce. Again, I'm basing that on nothing but speculation. Uh, but that that could be something as well, right? Uh, because there's realistically from here until... I don't know, that supplementary draft in December, there's really not going to be much going on. Uh, and the XFL's, I would assume, going to want to keep news pumping through that pipeline. Uh, so I don't know, that that could be an option as well. Um, but hey, so it looks like we have a pretty good showing here in, the, in uh, YouTube, about 60 people watching. So thanks for checking us out. Make sure you subscribe, click the link, click the bell. Hey, you know what? This is a good opportunity as well. Click the link down in the description for the Discord. Come and hang out with like-minded XFL fans like J Dash and myself. We're always having a good time. We do some crosstalk voice chat events sporadically throughout the week, so those are, uh, those are some events you won't want to miss. Like I said, the link's down in the description. Plus, also subscribe here. And actually, that just reminded me, subscribe to XF Podcast as well. I'm about to add the link to the description, so just bear with me, but that should be updated. If not, if you look up XF Podcast on YouTube, you should be able to find their channel fairly easily, but I'm updating the description right now. Uh, so we have about 15 minutes. What... Um, what do you think we should talk about here? There's, there's, there's still some news. Uh, I'm just going to update this and try to think of a new topic here. Because we'll have, um, should have a lot to talk about. Actually, here's a good topic. How do you think they're going to release these? Do you think we're going to get a tweet every 30 seconds or so? Uh, or do you think we're going to get maybe pools of picks throughout the day? I think we'll be getting the tweets from each individual teams, in my opinion. I think that's the, just a better way to do it. I hope um, so, because otherwise it's going to be long. <laughs> Not yeah. knowing when those are coming. Uh, but yeah, yeah, I'm hoping so, too. I think this is it. Well, this it would be smart for them to do it that way, too. It's a great way to boost up some of those social media numbers uh, for the team accounts, right? Not that they're not doing great, uh, but you know, there's some that are falling down down the list uh, more so than others, right? So the top of the list, I think, since they've announced this league, is St. Louis. Bottom of the list is Los Angeles. And the Texas teams are near the top, from what I remember. You you had made a list the other day. You're tracking all that. Uh, do, do you have that in front of you? Uh, I don't have that in front of me, but as of right now, I do actually... actually Damn, I love computer technology. It's right here. Uh, number one is the St. Louis uh, Battlehawks. Number two is the Houston 
uh, no, excuse me, Dallas Renegades, followed by the Houston Roughnecks, Seattle Dragons, Tampa Bay Vipers, the New York Guardians, the Washington Defenders, and coming up to the bottom, the Los Angeles Wildcats. Yeah, man. Well, you know what? Like I said, at least the Wildcats have this. Uh, one, their coach is going to be entertaining. You could just tell he's got that Raiders attitude. Uh, I think that's going to be fun. Two, the president, Heather Brooks Carrots, she's she's pretty good on social media, right? So I think that's going to help as well. And they, they seem to have hired a social media guy uh, recently as well that's doing a pretty good job. Uh, I'll tell you this, the D.C. social media person, that dude is killing it. That dude is probably the best social media guy in the league the other day. Uh, I don't know if you saw it, but <laughs> they created a TikTok account. Oh, TikTok. yeah. TikTok. <laughs> that I don't know why that just cracks me up. I, TikTok is one of those things. At least to me, maybe I'm just an old man, but TikTok is just one of those things to where I'll be very surprised if anybody uses TikTok a year and a half from now, right? It's, it's just like Vine. Vine, it'll yeah. come and go, just like Vine. Yeah. Yeah, and then then YouTube will be inundated with TikTokers when it closes down, just like it was with Vine, and we'll end up with the next Jake Paul. I'm excited. <laughs> <laughs> or Eric Dunn. We already have, actually. Isn't that where Belle Delphine came from? Man, we're getting way off. <laughs> we're getting way <laughs> off. Into the random stuff here lately. <laughs> no, this is what happens. We've been waiting for the draft. I'm, I'm, I'm feeling a little uh, crazy, if you will. This is, it's been a, it's been a busy couple months. We had some slow periods, but all in all, it's culminating into. Some fun stuff, I think. We're we're getting somewhere here. Um, let me just I'm adding the draft tracker to the uh, description as well. Yeah, if you want to take a look at all the folks in the draft, you can have, head over to xflnewsroom.com. Click on the trackers up top. Click the XFL draft track, tracker. Or if you want to check out the coaching staff, we have the staff tracker there as well. I added the link down in the description. You should click all the links. Like I said, we have the Discord the XF podcast and that draft tracker. We're uh, we're getting close to this draft. I'm really hoping that we do see these picks every 90 seconds. Uh, if not, I would assume I would assume and guess uh, we'll get them after each round, not necessarily phase. Um, something else to keep mind of too. I do have the link to this stream on XFLnewsroom.com. So if you want one central easy place, you can have the stream up top and then keep a – well, I'm going to be posting all of the draft picks in order as well. Uh, so that should be live on the site right now. Actually, I'll pull it up. Let's, uh, let's take a look and make sure it is on the site. Uh, it's a good opportunity to test our uh, web thing here. Where is it? Okay, no, that's not the right one. There we go. Yes, that seems to work. So, yeah, if you take a look at the screen here, this is how I'm going to be tracking the event. I have, have them separated by the different phases. So the first phase, we have the skill phase. Uh, I'm just going to run down the picks. But, like I said, we also have the video up top here. So if you just want one central easy place, you can check it out there. Uh, so we're getting there, man. About 10 minutes left. So... Carlos, your your partner is going to be joining us here soon. Uh, probably we may do a post draft stream tomorrow night. I don't know if there's a reason to cover it live during the event. Um, I don't know if it's going to be even as publicized as today's event, but we may do a post stream uh, post draft stream uh, with my man J Dash Tron Hawkins from the XFL podcast. Or this is the XFL podcast. I apologize. Uh, or we may just do a crosstalk, so click the link down in the description for that Discord. I'm probably going to go run and get some water here real quick before the events take off. Uh, I don't know if you want to talk to the crowd, take a look at the chat, uh, but I, I will be right back. Uh, I'm, I, I should have thought about the water before, so uh, weather the storm for me. Uh, it, I should be back in just like one minute.
Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, again for joining us here at the live XFL draft coverage of day one action. We're not going to be covering the whole draft, maybe a couple of hours. Not for one for me. I got to be at work at 1.30, so I'll be here all the way to about noonish. So those maybe two, two or three rounds of the draft. Remember, the XFL newsroom is all free, fan powered, and your voice. You interact with us, we will get more quality stuff out. Come follow me, J Dash. And the Wrestling Movie Guy at the Extreme Football Podcast at XF Podcast on Twitter. We're trying to update our YouTube page as we speak. Uh, there's really nothing on the page, so uh, I think there's a couple of videos, but we're trying to update it. Uh, we've been away for a while, personal issues, and also we have new uh, the new podcast that just dropped this this week, yesterday, that is. Um, and hopefully you can go check us, check us out, come follow us. Um, but then again, do I remind you, the XFL Newsroom, this is the XFL Podcast, the XF Podcast. We are all free, fan-powered, and your voice. It's all about the people. We're not following the company line. So, as we know, we're 10 minutes away to technically the first round draft pick. And by then, we will actually find who will be in the draft, who will be selected, and who will be on your team. So I want to ask this to the fans out there. What team are you supporting? And it's because of the quarterbacks that were selected or have you been supporting from day one? For me, I am just supporting the league itself. Don't have really a team. So exactly. Uh, Tony, uh, okay. uh, I'm going to join her. Uh, I'm, I'm pulling for all eight. Uh, the ref is Houston uh, Roughnecks. Uh, he is in the Houston area. Um, and I think Tron is, I want to say L.A., but I don't know officially. I may get him mad saying it's L.A. Battle Hawks. Yes. But my co-host, Carlos, the wrestling movie guy, you can follow him on Twitter as well. Uh, he'll be joining us here pretty soon. He has some, um, you know, adult stuff to deal with this morning. I did as well. And we'll be getting the draft going on here pretty soon. I really appreciate you guys um, for joining us. Uh, thank you. Um, share it. Like it. Subscribe. Do whatever you want. Uh, help build the brand. And join our Discord. Our Discord is... Uh, Something where we have a lot of uh, listeners and a lot of uh, people who join Crosstalks in there. We talk a lot of stuff about XFL all day, um, all day long, you know, and random stuff. We're just not strictly XFL. We're trying to build a community that loves this league because um, I've seen from past leagues, if you don't have a good community of fans, uh, it will fail. Uh, and hopefully we can send some positive vibes. But then again, thank you for being here with us today at the XFL Newsroom live stream of the 2019 slash 2020 XFL draft. And we are eight minutes away. Correction, we are seven minutes away from the first pick being announced by the DC Defenders, who have starting quarterback Cardell Jones, uh, national championship quarterback out of the Ohio State University. That's going to be an interesting. Uh, Interesting player for um, Ohio State. Uh, almost said Ohio State. Uh, I just did. Uh, interesting player for the D.C. Defenders. Uh, he's a very reliable quarterback. He knows what he's doing. Uh, he's been out of the spotlight for a couple of uh, years, but that doesn't mean he has the ability. Um, that doesn't have the ability to uh, bring his career back and to a chance to push forth to get back into the NFL. Every single player in this draft, ladies and gentlemen, main goal is is to get back to the NFL. That's just how that's just how you guys sit look at it. XFL should not be a area to stay for three or four years. Your goal is to get back to the XFL or NFL. Um, Sam, I agree. I'm from Jacksonville, Florida. I am, but I'm in between DC and Tampa. So yeah, I agree. I'm a free agent, but. I have a podcast. I cover the league, so therefore I am just being a um, will be neutral. I want to be a neutral person and give you guys the truth about the XFL with information 
and sometimes be the, uh, well, I like to say, be the Stephen Smith, uh, Stephen A. Smith of the XFL. So hopefully I can be that individual, and especially during football season with our pre-shows and our post-shows upcoming of the XFL season. You'll see that from me. I'm not going to be a hearty har har with the company in line. I will be a rogue sometime. You can say I can be a renegade. There you go. Hey, I'm back, by the way. I, I heard you, and I see you messing <laughs> with the screen. Yeah, you know, we're getting there. I just wanted that breaking news scroll back on there. Uh, we have five minutes. Five minutes till the first pick in the draft. Uh, this is this is really an exciting day. I can't wait, right? Uh, we were talking about this on Crosstalk last night. I got my season tickets for the Roughnecks. Section 109, let's represent if anyone's going to the Roughnecks. Come say hi to the ref. We'll be tailgating there as well. You're going out to D.C. for the home game, right? Either the first or the second weekend, XF Podcast will be live on location at D.C. for the first official football game. We'll have T-shirts. We'll have koozies. We'll have everything. We are going to be, you know, pep, you know, maybe join forces with the D.C. defenders. Maybe. Don't know. But try and get the things. You know, try and hype up this league, something that the AAF didn't do is allow their fans to do most of the work. Let the fans be the ones that promote this league. Yeah. Yeah, I think, uh, well, you can already see it with the, the league has some good fan interaction. They're doing those Q&A events is definitely going to help them along the way. Uh, you're already starting to see them do, like, community outreach, you know, specifically the Houston team. I want to say maybe a few months back, the, they, their social media team had posted the team president, Brian Cooper, uh, handing out coats for the Boys and Girls Club, right? That's that's the kind of stuff this league should be doing already, and it's great that they're doing it because that's that's what professional leagues do, right? You you kind of have to go in there almost like a fake it till you make it mentality, except for they're not faking it, right? Uh, we're seeing them go above and beyond what the AAF ever did, um, which is awesome. Right, and a lot of the teams have uh, events scheduled for Thursday, the day after the draft ends. So I know Dallas does, Houston does, Tampa Bay does, I believe Los Angeles does. So that's at least half the teams have some type of event right after the draft. St. Louis has them pretty much every week. Uh, it's kind of crazy how how many of those things that they do. But St. Louis is going to that dome is going to be rocking at least that first game. At least that first game. Um, and like I said, from what I heard, ticket sales are doing pretty good. Doing pretty good for the Roughnecks. Uh, I tried to get two extra seats in my section. And they were pretty much sold out all the way to the 30-yard line of both sides, which is very, very promising. Now, again, this is Texas. Texans love football. Uh, but regardless, you know, if even if, Texas, both those teams, that's two of your teams. You're going to have pretty much sell-out games every game, you know, at least from a, because they're not selling the, mm -hmm. the second tier yet, right? They're only I don't selling know if this is a, a, I know this is ain't breaking news, but I don't know if this is official, official. But Vegas already has odds out on who the best XFL team is already, just based on the tier one quarterbacks. Well, they had, I know Bovada put them out months ago just based on the coaches. Uh, but let's take a look. So who who is that again? Vegas. Uh, uh, let's just... Ve Vegas. The one uh, I don't know how legit this is, but Dallas is currently the front runners to win the first X, uh, the second XFL championship because of Landry Jones. Do you have uh, Do you have a link to that by chance? I'll throw it up on the screen. Just on Twitter. Let me go find it again. Now I'm getting all the updates from the XFL. Keish Louise. Man, they changed Bovada, man. I haven't been on here in a while. Oh, jeez, come on. Okay, <laughs> good. I don't have to log in to do that first. <laughs> good. Oh, did they take it off? I thought for sure it was on Bovada before. Uh, XFL odds. Let's just in Vegas. Let me see if I can find the stoop. All right, one minute. We have one minute until. Ah, uh, it's on the website anymore. They changed it. Nah. Oh well. Not a big deal. It's not like it really even matters yet. Anyway. Not yet. <laughs> My network team going to be trash. Gage Adam already. <laughs> <I'm> <laughs> even, <laughs> you don't even know who your players are. Well, you know your quarterback. That's the only reason why. I'm, now I feel bad if you're a Giants fan. Well, Jets fan. Well, not really. You guys got both quarterbacks on. 
Adam Jones. Oh, uh, not Adam Jones. You have uh, Sam Donald and... Uh, yeah, Mono Boy's back. Yeah. And he uh, did good. He won. Yeah, he did. Same. Yeah, he, uh, Mono. You got Daniel Jones. That's his name, not Adam Jones. But ladies and gentlemen, it's official. Who do we got? Jeff is here. Let's see. Okay. I just got a tweet. The draft is here. The DC defenders are not Facebook, are on the clock. Okay. This is the big one, guys. First pick of the XFL draft. Brand new XFL. Brand new league. Let's put up the defenders here. Let's see if they post it on here. So we have our Cardale Jones. Who, who's going to be the first player to join Cardale Jones? You know, I don't like Ohio State very much because I am a Wolverines fan. Uh, but there's a reason I don't like Ohio State, because they beat the Wolverines. <laughs> so I guess that is good. Hey, we have my man joining in here. Oh, did that work? Are you knocking out Carlos? He was trying to get in. I hit accept, and it I don't know if it worked. It says incoming call, answering this call. Okay, there we go. Boom. Can you hear us now? Good morning, Vietnam. Yeah, sign us up just in time for the first pick in the league. We're waiting for social media to do its updates here. So far, nothing yet, but the defenders... They should be making their pick any second, and then we're moving on to the Roughnecks. We're covering everything live, so while we're waiting for that pick, make sure you hit the links down in the description. Subscribe to the XFL Newsroom YouTube. Subscribe to the XFL po XF Podcast on YouTube. And uh, you know, click the link in the description for the Discord, and come and hang out with us and a bunch of other like-minded XFL fans. And come on, defenders, give us our first pick of the draft we're waiting here with bated breath sign us up so uh now, carlos whose idea was it to have this draft so early in the morning <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's um it's well think of yeah if, especially if you're on the west coast it's uh what seven seven in the morning la That'd be absolutely brutal for anybody that's like living out in <laughs> like seattle or something yeah <laughs> Oh boy! Come on, let's let's get this pick. Landry Jones, I expect to be number one. Rashard Davis, Rashard Davis, wide receiver huh. for the Defenders. Sign him up. Oh look, they have a little live stream going here too. Let's just let's just do this. Yeah, this makes this easier. Let's just pull this bad boy up and see how long it takes for him to copyright strike our video. <laughs> hey, look at that! I like that. Look, hey, we're we're the first thing. Uh, watch our video. There you go. Uh, so let's take a look here. So we have Rashard Davis, wide receiver. So I, I, that's what I thought uh, we would get a wide receiver number one. You were thinking running back. Houston Roughnecks are on the board. Thirty seconds left. This is going to be good. It's nice to have a little draft uh, live look in of Oliver Luck there. So who do we think we're getting for the Roughnecks? I need to start updating this draft tracker on my site as well. Uh, let's see. I have no idea where they're going to go because I, I was so certain the Landry Jones would go number one. You always start off with the quarterback. So, well, the, the quarterbacks, those, those have been assigned. So Landry uh, Jones, yeah. So um, I don't know if that's on the street. Connor Cook! Connor Cook, number wow. <laughs> Wow. QB, they already have a tier one. Wow, Connor Cook. And, you know, I, I'm happy. I really wanted him in Houston. So I'm hype about that. Wow. Quarterback number two in the draft. Sign us up. So what does everyone think of these picks so far? That is, that's pretty crazy. Unexpected. I, did, I thought for sure we'd be getting a running back. Or not a running back, sorry, a wide receiver. Wow, wow, wow. Okay, so June Jones making some some risky moves there. But he, uh, you know, I guess it's good. You know, they both can play that type of offense. 
We still have plenty of time in this draft. And plus, like we were talking about earlier, there's two supplemental drafts going on. Uh, so we could we could see some other bigger names come through. Like I said, specifically, I think that third draft, there's two teams that I have in mind that are going to make some big waves in that third draft in January. And that's Houston and Tampa Bay, mainly in part for their CFL ties. I think we're going to see a lot of these CFL guys go into that draft, and we can already see both of those guys are heavy in that CFL uh, area, just looking at their coaching staffs and their experience. But, man, number two, Connor Cook. So we have the Guardians on the board. I'm on XFL.com with like Yancey D'Angelo. Yancey D'Angelo. Yancey D'Angelo. All right. We got wide receiver. So everyone's going wide receiver so far, except for uh, Houston. <laughs> you know, I, I'm still excited. I think that's going to be awesome. But uh, definitely not expected. Not at all. Huh. I thought everybody would be going quarterback first, no matter what. Selection, select wide receiver, wide receiver, Oklahoma. Who do we got? We have a wide receiver uh, from Oklahoma. You may need to turn down your audio yeah, just a bit, or we're going to get... I thought uh, I had, I had, I had, I had <laughs> down to 18. Good boy. Wide receiver, Oklahoma. Jeff Bidette. Uh, wide receiver yeah. out of Oklahoma. Dude, uh, Stoops, I have a feeling we're going to see a lot of Oklahoma picks coming out of Stoops today. <laughs> so we already have Landry, uh, you know, former Oklahoma quarterback. That's tier one for him. And now Jeff Bidette, Oklahoma, uh, what was it, wide receiver, my bad. Vipers on the board. So they have some, some local students announcing their picks, which I think is pretty cool. Uh, it's, it's always nice to see, like, again, this league do that community outreach. Um, so no, no better time to start than now. Confirmed. I was going to say, Nick. Truesdale. Tight end. Truesdale. Tight yeah. end. Yeah, that is. Yeah. And now Trustman. Trustman, yeah, I could see him getting a million tight ends. Uh, so <laughs> that is no surprise there. Good for the Tampa Bay Randy Ortons. <laughs> I know. Wouldn't it have been amazing, though, if they ended up in St. Louis? <laughs> people would have been people would have been salty, I think, about that one. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> It would have been beautiful. If you were writing a novel, it couldn't have written itself any better. So we have the St. Louis Battlehawks on the board. Now, this is a fan favorite. Christine Michael. It's probably Christine the, Michael? Is that who they just announced? All of them right now. Yeah, that dome is going to be rocking. Uh, it's it's going to be... Yep, Christine Michael. Running back, Texas, A&M. A &M. Dragons, you are on the clock. That's a good choice. Starting off with a running back, I like it. This has been a really unusual kind of draft. How often do you see a team take a, a tight end with the fifth overall pick? Yeah, I know. That, that is surprising. But that, Trustman, man, he's, he's, a, he's got a whole different game plan down there. I'll tell you what. Uh, but, yeah, it's... This first round, it, where where I think it's going to start really getting interesting is the kind of these later rounds. No, not later rounds, but the later rounds in this first pool and that that fifth open draft. We're gonna, I think, we're gonna see a lot of. That's where we'll start getting some of the real randoms. But yeah, tight end fifth in the draft, quarterback number two after being assigned a tier one quarterback. Definitely been some surprises so far. Dragons about to make their pick. Looks like they're making it right now. Trey Williams, is that what I heard? Uh, I can see the coach's lips moving, but I cannot I hear what he's saying. I also don't want to put the echo on here because I'm sure that'd be annoying. Trey Williams, another running back from Texas A&M. Back-to-back Texas A&M guys. Texas A&M, you Texas know, and I'm still surprised talking about Texas A&M. I'm, I'm really surprised we didn't see Manziel here. Uh, that thought crossed my mind as well. I was like, so where is Johnny Football? That was one 
I was for sure, for sure, <laughs> was gonna lo land in uh, land in Houston. But no, no, we got now we have two quarterbacks. We only have we have coaches and quarterbacks. I, honestly, I hope the, the 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 Roughnecks only pick quarterbacks, <laughs> quarterbacks and kickers. Let's make this a real hell of a game. Give us two wide receivers, ten quarterbacks, and a kicker. <laughs> With the eighth overall pick, the Los Angeles Wildcats select Jose Cortez. Ooh, sorry, I had to right, quench my some, thirst I there. Need, I need to get something to drink myself at some point, but I'll wait until the end of this draft. I know, I thought about it right before this started, and my, 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 uh, my dry, uh, I was, yeah, I can't even talk already, my, I was getting dry mouth pretty damn bad. <laughs> <laughs> Said, you know, I need to go get that Powerade out of the fridge. I need some electrolytes and sugar. I got water and or milk right now. I have to get a Red Bull at some point. Milk and does water. a body right. Oh, yeah. All right, Wildcats, who do we got? Who's joining? Uh, who is it? Luis Perez, right? And uh, he's the Wildcats quarterback. He's Elijah Hood. Oh, Elijah yeah, Hood. That's uh, a solid pick. North Kekalak. Good stuff. I mean, okay. Elijah pretty good, but he's not Elijah Wood. What's that? He's not Elijah Wood. Yeah. He's <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> All right. So now we have second round. Second round, LA's back on the board. I love a, I love a good snake draft. Uh, it's the only draft. It's the only way you should ever do a draft. I know people do them differently in fantasy football, and I'll never know why. Snake draft is where it's at. So let's see. Let's see how LA capitalizes here on that back to back pick. So I, I'm thinking they went running back first. We'll probably go wide receiver second. Let's see. Oh, we have a a break in between rounds, so about two and a half minutes left in until we kick off the next round. How's everyone in the chat doing? Hopefully everything's going well. Um, you know, we'll use this opportunity again to shill everything. If you want to donate to the stream, click the link down in the description, streamlabs.com slash XFL Newsroom. Plus, make sure you subscribe, comment, like, do all those fun things. We have links, you know, to the XF podcast down there as well. We have the draft tracker. And we're, we're tracking all the picks live on XFLnewsroom.com. So if you want one central area uh, where you want to take a look at all the picks and everything like that, you can head right over here, refresh the page, and you'll see not only do you have the stream at the top here, but we will be announcing the picks as they come through as well. So, so far, here's what we have. First pick in the draft, Richard Davis. Second pick, Connor Cook for Houston. Third pick, Yancer D'Angelo for the Guardians. Jeff Bedette for the Dallas Renegades, Oklahoma guy. So far, that whole team is Oklahoma team. Uh, but we still have some more picks in the dra draft. Nick Truesdale, tight end for Tampa Bay. Kind of a surprising pick there. Christine Michael, running back for the Battle Hawks. Great pick. I think he's going to be solid. Trey Williams for the Dragons. And Elijah Hood for the uh, the Wildcats. Sorry, I almost screwed that one up. Elijah Hood. I, so far, these are all great picks. Probably the most surprising to me is that Connor Cook pick. Uh, but what do you guys think? Who who are some of these folks that you would like to see go in this second round here? Uh, we just have a little under a minute left until the uh, the XFL kicks off that second round. LA's back on the board, uh, so they're going to take advantage of that back to back pick. I'm assuming by probably going for a wide receiver after going after a running back already. Uh, but time will tell. Like I said, we've seen some surprising things so far. Um, but, yeah, I don't know. It, it, this is a good time to be an XFL fan. It's been way too long. Certainly getting a lot more press coverage from uh, compared to what happened back in 2001 when they had their original draft. I remember trying to watch that, and it was impossible. <laughs> and the yeah. internet was nowhere near the way that it is today. Yeah, that's that's going to be something that's really going to help this XFL out that the other XFL 
probably probably would have survived with social media, at least the way it is today. Um, and, you know, I don't know what the XFL app is going to look like. We saw what the AAF tried to do. And, they, you know, for, for in, all intents and purposes, with what they had, that was pretty cool. I like the idea of uh, predicting the plays and things like that. But I think... I think they're going to go above and beyond there, uh, but you know we'll we'll have we'll have to f- see when that time comes. Let's see here where are we at. Ra- Rashad Ross is the second pick for the Los Angeles Wildcats. So they did. They went after wide receiver for Arizona State. And so they have quarterback, wide receiver, running back so far. You know, I had uh, a friend of mine just pinged me on Facebook, actually. He said, why did Houston pick a quarterback when they already have a quarterback? I said, eh, I don't know, man. It, this is the XFL. Get over it. <laughs> you, know? oh, you got to say right. This is the XFL. Yeah. <laughs> You're fired. Yeah. By the way, quick thing. Uh, can't seem to hear James. Uh, what's going on with that? Is oh, he... is he? I thought he maybe took a break or something. Where did he go? I uh, got a text saying, uh, going to have to do group chat. I think that seems to be only one-on-one right now. Or... Oh! Oh! <laughs> I, I'm, no, I was, I'm, I'm an idiot. All right, hold on. Stay here, then. Let I me... I and kicked him out. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, <laughs> hey there, I think you're back now. <laughs> Dude, we're jerks. <laughs> Can you hear us? James. You hear us? Oh, I can hear you now. <laughs> <laughs> Seattle Dragons take Mia Farrow. I mean, <laughs> running back from Houston. All right. I'm only here on the chat board, just updating the chat. So, like, I'm wondering when I'm going to get back in the group chat. <laughs> Guys. Guys. You know, it didn't dawn on me uh, <laughs> that you were gone so long and it happened at the same time that I added Carlos to the call, so my bad. <laughs> Brogan Roback, Eastern Michigan quarterback. So St. Louis going with quarterback with their second pick. So all of a sudden, all of a sudden, it's not so strange that the Roughnecks picked a quarterback. I don't think no, it was strange I- at all. Well, I did Nobody mention before the one. draft. Yeah, before I before the draft, I said that there's going to be a team that's going to draft the quarterback in the first round, and that team, the reason why they draft the quarterback is because they're not 100% sold on their tier one. Shontavious Jones taking number four by Tampa Bay. There we go. So they have wide receiver, tight end, and a quarterback now. Curious to see where Houston goes. I I gotta say that it has to be now. It has to be. A wide receiver is my my yeah, guess. It's right, got to be. I was say it would be Houston, but it's Dallas. I know. I'm just jumping ahead here. Uh, Dallas, I'll make a prediction that they probably played for Oklahoma. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Northern Illinois, so close. Tommy Lee Lewis. What? Is he related to Tommy Lee Lewis? Yeah, right. Molly, Molly Cruz? Wide receiver, Northern Illinois. His dad really must have been a big fan of Motley Crue. <laughs> yeah, I don't think I've ever seen... To- I wonder if that's... Because uh, the way they have it written here, Tommy Lee is one word. And I'm curious about that. <laughs> Sorry about that. was my phone. Oh, no, you're good. You're good. Uh, so just updating the tracker here. So we have the Guardians on the board for their second pick. Let's see where they go. See what Gilbride does here. He went uh, wide receiver first round. I would assume probably running back this time around. Maybe tight end. Uh, let's see where he goes. About 50 seconds left there. And in keeping with the Guardian thing, the New York Guardians select Batman. Yeah. <laughs> surprising because Batman is at least 45 years old. Let's see if he still has some left in the tank. It's a bold strategy to see if it works. Third round. So once we get to that defensive draft, they're going to cast the uh, the uh, the cast from what was it Gargoyles, the cartoon show. <laughs> God, I used to love that back in the day. I know. I miss I miss good cartoons. Mikhail McKay, wide receiver, Why Cincinnati. Cincinnati. Sign him up. I can dig that. 
not that familiar with him, to be perfectly honest. I, from what I can remember, he was pretty legit in college. I think a lot of these guys were probably good in college and just sizzled off. You know, the NFL's a hard thing, too, right? Oliver Luck has talked about this in the past many a times. Like, it's not, uh, there's, so, there's so little room in the NFL, right? To get on a team, to get on a practice squad. Even getting on a practice squad is pretty impressive, right? But there's only so many players that can play a game. And at that level, you're only going to get the best of the best, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, Whereas those guys can still play. And that's where the XFL is going to capitalize a lot of these guys. Khalil Lewis, wide receiver for Roughnecks. Okay, so we have two quarterbacks and a wide receiver. I like that move. Uh, Thought we would get the wide receiver in the first pick. But maybe June Jones knew that he was going to be able to get that guy in the second uh, round there. So, uh. But so far out of the second round, uh, uh, Richard uh, Ramaros. Trey McBride. Trey McBride, wide receiver, William Mary for the defenders. Uh, Richard Ross for the L.A. uh, Wildcats is a great pick because he was the leading receiver in the XFL, uh, not XFL, the AAF last year uh, for the Arizona Hotshots, if I do remember. Uh, so that's a solid second round draft pick right there. And I thought, I thought Rashad Ross was number one for the hot shots. I, I thought he was. I think he was the number one leading receiver in the AAF. But that's what you like to call good old good fashioned Google people. Let's see. God, what is this Google you speak of? Yeah, I have no idea, sir. God bless Google, by the way. Uh, <laughs> dude, I. Arizona hot shots. Man, I wish. I wish we had that when I was a kid in school. <laughs> there are so many things we wish we had when we were kids in school. You know, we did have Wikipedia, and they never let us use it in any of our research. And I'm curious if they do now. And I could see, as a kid, I didn't understand. As an adult, I clearly do. Uh, you can do. You can say anything you want on Wikipedia. If you have a good enough ratio on there, nobody's going to edit your stupid thing. <laughs> you know? They have guidelines for it now. And real quick, an update on Rashard Ross. Yes, he was indeed an Arizona hotshot. And he led with 36 receptions, 583 yards, and seven touchdowns. And, of course, I know him because he was a Redskin. Rashard Ross was the second leading receiver in the AAF with 583 yards. Right behind Charles Johnson. In addition, he, uh, Wikipedia at least says he had the highest rated AAF receiving grade from Pro Football Focus. Not bad, not bad. 52, 52 targets, uh, air yard, air yard leaders is Richard Ross, 838 yards, second, right behind Quentin Patton and Charles Johnson the third. Which was the third? Not he's not the third, but the third. So we have about a minute left until the third round kicks off. We're uh, back at the top of the rotation, so we have the defenders coming up. So far, uh, pretty pretty decent list. Pretty decent list. So the defenders, they have, uh, what do we got here? DC has two wide receivers, so I'm expecting probably a running back or a tight end here. Uh, but they... they they clearly they they clearly are trying to capitalize on that Cardale Jones offense, right? So they're heavy on wide receivers so so far. But we'll we'll see here. About thirty seconds, and they're going to be on the board again, and we should know. I say you expect to find a quarterback to throw these balls to these wide receivers. Well, they have so their tier one their tier one quarterback is Cardale Jones. Actually, let's oh, put yeah, that right. Jeez, let's I'm put that up on now. the. <laughs> Not the draft order. I want... Actually, no, I was on the right screen. Let's just go back here. Yeah, so here we go. Renegades, Landry Jones, Defenders, Cardale Jones, Roughnecks, Philip Walkers, and uh, Connor Cook now. Wildcats have Lewis Perez. Uh, Guardians, Matt, M- Matt McGlowan. Again, a name I haven't heard in a while. Battlehawks, Jordan T- Taumu. I- I'm going to have to learn the pronunciation on that name, so I apologize, everyone. Uh, Dragons, Brandon Silvers, and Vipers, Aaron Murray. So we have a few AAF guys there. Um, 
And we have the defenders on the board now. So let's see. It looks like they just made their pick. They made it pretty quick. So let's see who it's going to be. Jarrell Presley, running back. Okay, so I was right there. We went running back. Uh, so two wide receivers, running back, quarterback. Uh, so far, so good. Speaking of former AAF players, Jarrell Presley was the leading rusher of the AAF last season. So he has some minor league slash um, per, uh, professional football experience. He led the AAF with 431 yards rushing last year. <sighs> nice. Yeah, so that's uh, it's nice to see these AAF guys get a shot in a league that is going to make it to the championship game. <laughs> Don't bend <Ben> drops. <laughs> uh, I'm going to be right back. Got to get something to drink. Right yep, there we go. Another person getting something to drink. <laughs> yeah, we're making the rotations here. So we have the roughnecks are on the clock uh, for the. Oh man, I got so many windows open on my side. Holy crap! I know. Same here. <laughs> it's like it's a madhouse. Okay, so who are we going? We have two quarterbacks and a wide receiver. So I would assume a wide receiver or running back here. Uh, I would say wide receiver. That's that's going to be my official guess here. But let's let's see what happens. Wide Sammy receiver, Coates, Sammy uh, Coates. We, Coast, very good, decent wide receiver out of Auburn. Very explosive, good route runner. I think that's a good pick for the. Uh, uh, by the way, uh, do us a favor, uh, Stefan, is find a way to increase the volume of me and Carlos on your stream. It's very low. We're getting complaints on the board for that. Ooh. Hello. Okay, let me. Maybe I'll oh do this. My. I probably just need to lower my volume. <laughs> Oh, yeah, action, how do I, maybe, hold on, actually, maybe I can do this, maybe I can apply, yeah, I think what something happened when we joined the group call, because it even got quieter on my side, but try to, uh, try talking now, let's see what the chat says, hopefully it's a little bit better. Hello, 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 good morning, folks. Microphone, real tech, audio. How do we uh, how, how do we sound, Chad? Are we closer to equal now? Yeah, we're, we're right now through Skype for us. I can hear you both, of you guys, perfectly. Come on, chat, hook us up. I know you're there. Well, I know there's probably a delay. They don't even know what I'm asking yet. <laughs> <laughs> Back to the future. Okay, so we have the Guardians on the board while we wait. It's better, but not great. They are very low. Okay, let's try. I'm going to boost you guys up all the way and move me down halfway. Start saying some words here. Hamina, 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 Hamina. Tori Wilson used to be hot. Stacey Keebler is still pretty hot. The New York Guardians have selected Tanner Gentry by receiver. Wyoming. Wyoming. Tanner Gentry. Okay, that's a name I don't know. Well, it's because it's Wyoming. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Sorry to see anybody in Wyoming. We I'm not taking it. shots, but the XFL will have a lot of players from small schools. And Wyoming is a D1 school, but it's a smaller school. Cameron Artis Payne, running back out of Auburn. Taking by the good. Renegades. Nice Very pick. Good. He's a solid running back. So how's the sound quality? Are we back on par? Uh, I don't know. I'm still tinkering with it. So I'm going to try to make this a little bit better. I think uh, yeah, we're getting there. We're doing things on the fly. I'm not really much of a live streamer, so this is kind of new to me. But I have you guys all the way up. I'm moving myself down a little bit so my hope is maybe that just e evens out our volumes here and then people can turn the volume up on the video i can't check it on my side otherwise you guys are going to get a hell of a echo and <laughs> nobody's going to want that trust it um we have here my stream got a 
little crappy here. Is that Davion Smith for the Vipers? Yep, Davion Smith, running back from Michigan. And DeMorne Pearson L for uh, for the Battle Hawks here. And I'm probably going to butcher some of these names throughout the day, so don't kill me. Um, sounds like the audio is better now, so good, good, good. That's what I like to hear. Um, and, hey, uh, since we're running through these picks, like I said, I'm going to show this a couple times. Click the links down in the description. Describe, subscribe to our channel. Subscribe to the XF Podcast. We have a link down there. Click the link in the description for the Discord. And, hey, if you're feeling generous and you want to, you know, give us a dollar or something, buy, buy us a Coke, there's a link down there as well. Streamlabs.com slash XFL Newsroom. And who do we got on the board? We have the Dragons about to pick. Breathe fire. Yeah, it's going to be fun. We're starting to see some of these teams get <laughs> identities, too, with kind of like their catchphrases. Um, uh, what The Battlehawks have one. Was it Engaged or something? I can't even remember what theirs is. I'm trying to push the rough them up like one for Houston. We'll see. <laughs> Seattle Dragons select Fred Ross. Wide receiver, Mississippi State. Fred Ross. Okay. Just updating my sheet here. So we got the Ross brothers. I think there's no relation. Oh, well, damn. Never mind then. <laughs> Brother from another mother, maybe. Distant cousin of a third party. Yeah. Aren't we all brothers from another mother? And sisters, I think. <laughs> I am random in the morning. Yeah, I'm not used to this either. <laughs> We have the Wildcats on the board here. Looks like they're about to make their pick. Just saw the timer go down. Yep. Stopped at 56 seconds. Most Let's curious what what they get. Yeah, I was up late last night. Oh, we got Nelson Spruce. Nelson Spruce. Round, we have three minutes, and then Wildcats, you will be on the clock to start round four. What, what was that? <laughs> Good Lord. Now, that was actually audio from the actual event. The, the quality was pretty good. I'm waiting clear, for the stamp. Clear. Copyright strike. <laughs> <laughs> I think as long as it's just sound, you're okay. Because yeah. uh, we used to do that WWE live stream until that unfortunate incident. Oh, I meant to say that uh, a brother, Carlos. Yeah, yeah. We've got to do our player highlights now. The time has come. The time has come, my friend. Oh, don't text me. Somebody from Florida is calling me. That's not me. About to say. That's the only reason I can imagine. I get so many robocalls from Florida and Nebraska. I get I... robocalls from Virginia and D.C. What you know, it's funny. Hell? I get Sorry them. I get them from <laughs> Arizona and New York. Now, I'm, my guess is the Arizona one is I still have an Arizona phone number from when I lived there. I just never changed it. And I'll tell you this. It's the greatest way to detect spam calls because I'd say 90% of those calls from Arizona, just because I have an Arizona number, are all BS. And I know the people that I would know that would be calling me. So I just decided not to get a, a Texas phone number. I just said, screw it. This is this is great spam detection. <laughs> you know? Yeah, don't need it. Don't need hey, a stop, robocop. Stop spamming. Yeah. Right. Actually, let's uh maybe we'll do a giveaway here. So I'm gonna do I'm gonna give away an XFL hat. Uh actually let me go on camera here real quick. Ooh, ooh, We're gonna ooh, give out an ooh, XFL ooh. hat just like this one. But here's the trick, here's the kicker. You gotta you gotta join us on Discord. So what we're gonna do Let's go back over here. I'm going to set up a giveaway on Discord. I'll probably set it for an hour. Uh, and basically what you'll need to do is um, click the party hat. I'll show you here in a second once I have this all set up. I think I tried to do this the other day. Uh, I'll just do it in XFL general. So let's see. How do I set up giveaway? Give away uh, one hour. I think that's how it works. Well, that clearly didn't work. Okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> We're becoming a crapshoot here. Does anyone know how to use giveaway bot on Discord? <laughs> how about this? How about this? 
because me and Carlos are mods, and Freeman and uh, Weather are mods on our on Discord. We'll give it away to the tenth person that joins. Okay, yeah, that works. So, starting now, click the link down in the description for the Discord tenth person to join up. Well, you know, the thing is though, is I want to give the folks that are already on Discord a chance to win, but yeah, you're right. Screw them. Start now. <laughs> We have, and we also we're, we're announcing the 1,000 subscriber giveaway this Friday on this week in the XFL, our Friday show that we do every Friday at 11 a.m. Eastern, 8 a.m. Pacific. We're here every week, so all, that's still open. We're we're closing down entries Thursday night, so all you need to do is make sure you're subscribed to the channel, like and comment comment on any of the recent videos this one included and you'll be entered into that giveaway so that's that's uh, another opportunity there as well um like i said we're going to be giving away an xfl hat and probably some other goodies but enough of the bs we have brandon barnes for the los angeles wildcats tight end from alabama state da -da -da, da -da -da. sign them up okay so now they got a tight end they have i, I don't have the list here so let's see los angeles we have Two wide receivers, a running back, and now a tight end. They're building their team pretty smart. They're building it the way I would have expected in, in these drafts. So, uh, you know, we still have plenty of time. Plenty of surprises here. Just waiting on who's going to take Tommy Maddox. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> He's still defending champion. Yeah, you know, I was really hoping that the L.A. team would – talk about that but i get why they don't they don't really i it, they just don't want to be affiliated with the old league at all um and i think that's kind of cruel though because people remember the xfl oh. that's the entire point of reviving the brand because people have somewhat fond memories of it and tommy maddox is one of those fond memories yeah well that not just him but the whole team him uh, and he hate me. I would have loved to see a pregame show with those two guys, right? How Similar, you have like NFL, have him? right, where you have former NFL players, right? It w that would have been cool. Now, I expect as the league builds, if it's sustainable, we're still here in 10 years, we'll probably see some of these guys that are in this first draft behind the booth. Somewhere, somewhere, that will happen, right? Uh, and, and then, granted, that's if the league sticks around, but I, I think it will. I think, like I said, that second year is that make-break year. We got LaDamian Washington and Jay Samaro. All right. They've both so, been taken. Wide receivers and tight ends, tight ends and wide receivers, and the occasional quarterback. I could tell, I could tell what the Battlehawks are doing. They're going after players that have um, – that are – geographically located in the St. Louis area. You just had a guy from Nebraska, and you had a guy from uh, Missouri. So I can see where they're going here. We got Jalen Tolliver from Arkansas, taken by Tampa Bay. Wide receiver, okay. All right. So now we're going on. Dallas is on the board. About a minute and a half left for their next pick here. So we got Jalen Tolliver. Jalen Tolliver. I'm going to say a lot of these teams you're at are probably going to take more local guys because they'd be cheaper. Woo! It'd be cheaper to uh, bring them in that way as opposed to pay for travel. Yeah, and quite honestly, there's a, a, I think the, guy, the, the players probably, in, in some instances, a lot of these players probably want that anyway, right? Cause some mm -hmm. of these, a lot of these guys probably have families. So Absolutely. Stacy Coley. Stacey Coley. Wide receiver. wide receiver, University of Miami. This is this guy is a speed demon. This guy will be a great weapon for Landry Jones. I know from experience he, he torched my Seminoles multiple years <laughs> with the Miami Hurricanes. So I know if, from experience. No, from experience. No, no, you don't. Yeah, you're right. I, I don't. We have the Guardian uh, on the board. Day, him and her got it on. I'm sorry. I'm going on a tangent here. No, you're good. You're good. It's it's. <laughs> Draft day. We're allowed to be a little bit goofy. Coley? That's not how you spell Chris Cooley. You're missing an O. I thought that's what his name was. I'm going to update that on my <laughs> side. I thought, I was like, well, maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. I'm not I'm not the best with grammar, so, you know, it is what it is. But, okay, good. You know, speak English? <laughs> In, uh, good Lord, man. 
<laughs> I'm Mexican, and I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> About 30 Remember, seconds left for the Guardians. Remember, ladies and gentlemen, we're all free. Fan-powered in your voice. That's our motto. And we always like to have a good time. The answer is always yes. Tim Cook, all right. Okay, so my roughnecks are on the board here. Do us right, June Jones. We need a... Uh, let's get a third quarterback. Hey, let's get a third quarterback. <laughs> Who else do we have left there? Houston's like, running back, you said? Yeah. So I didn't know uh, the president of Apple was in this draft. Is he a draftable player? Tim Cook? No, I'm making a <laughs> joke. <laughs> Tim Apple. <laughs> just, just picture this like really thin dude just running onto the field. Yeah, I made it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Welcome to the XFL, son. You gotta have like fires and explosions in the background, so he needs to be hit by with, uh, with a wrecking ball. We got ourselves another running back being picked. All right, Kyle Hicks. Kyle Hicks. Okay. TCU. All right. DC defenders select DC defender DeAndre Hopkins. DeAndre Hopkins. I believe it's DeAndre Hopkins. Wide receiver, right? Yes, I believe. Select. Yeah. Ah, Penn State guy. I like that. My stepdad went to Penn State, so I've always been cool with Penn State. I like Penn State. They had a, you know, they had a couple problems a few years ago, but <laughs> all in all, dude, that their coach still was a legit coach. You know, what are you gonna do? Every school has their problems. Can't blame players. But yeah, I can. Uh, if somebody's not a Penn State fan, I can. Uh, I can understand. So they took down our draft board, but I'm assuming they're in uh, probably in between round breaks here. Mm -hmm. uh, let's take a look. So we're what about halfway through this first phase? Yep, yeah, I'm getting into round four now. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we're halfway through. Halfway through the first phase, right? We, but uh, I don't know how many we're gonna, how long we're gonna stream. Probably maybe the, definitely all of the first phase. Go into the second phase. I don't know how much after that. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna be with you guys until noon because I gotta be at work at one thirty. Oh, okay. Cool. So that's so, what, like an hour and fifteen from now. Yeah. So I okay. can, I can do first phase. Rest of the first phase and maybe half of the second phase. That that actually works. We'll we'll plan on just cutting it off there because, like I said, I don't want to go too long today. I didn't even realize the XFL was doing any kind of stream to be honest with you. So, uh, but we may do uh, may do some post streaming events tomorrow. Definitely going to be doing some cross talk events probably throughout the week and going into the season. Uh, about a minute left on this draft break here. But overall, hey, we're halfway through. This is, this is pretty fun, pretty good stuff. Uh, I'm going to be going to – Houston has a post-draft celebration Thursday, so I'll be attending that. I'll probably either get footage for something or I may even live stream it depending on what's going on because the coach is actually there this time, and those ones actually seem to do uh, pretty well, pretty well. And June Jones, he kind of – I like the way he – I like the cut of his jib. Uh, he kind of says what he wants when he wants. So uh, you never know what you're going to learn at a June Jones Q&A. <laughs> <laughs> I 
Who is Jim Jones? Who is Jim Jones? Who? Matt Jones? Who? Matt Jones? Who? See, now we're going to get demonetized. DC. This is 2019 YouTube here, guys. Not even not not that we're even monetized in the first place. But if we were, <laughs> you can't even like hum a song anymore on YouTube. It's it's like crazy. Hey, we're just bringing it back, even a retro. Hey, so just a reminder, everyone, we're we're doing a giveaway for an XFL hat. Uh, tenth person to subscribe to us on Discord is the lucky winner. So click the link down in the description for that Discord. And hey, come and hang out with us, a bunch of other like-minded XFL fans. Hopefully, you guys are keeping track because I have not been. I don't know how. <laughs> I don't stuff. know how many we got here. We have stuff. <laughs> come join us. Stuff. More stuff. <laughs> yeah, I mentioned we have stuff. <laughs> we have the defenders on the board right now. Do we mention we have more stuff? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, wait, on that. Come on, defenders. What you got? What you got? A new car. Bob Barker, what the hell are you doing here? <laughs> <laughs> now that's Come somebody I now. would enjoy watching call a football game bob bob barker bob barker and jim ross <laughs> boys state not Bowie state did he say Bowie state he said <laughs> Bowie state oh no he was just, i was saying boo earns oh it is boy state oh <laughs> uh, <man>. womp womp <laughs> wow i just got school i thought it was a boise state i'm like yeah so tight end Boise State? Never heard of her. <laughs> yeah, I think that's local to the D.C. area, if I remember correctly. I could uh, be wrong. We, yeah, I believe so, yes. Let's just take a look. Makes me think of the uh, the Baltimore Orioles uh, Bowie minor league team. Yeah, they're in Maryland, so that, that makes sense. And I think we're going to see a lot. Uh, like we were talking about with the Battle Hawks earlier, we, we probably are going to see a lot of these teams pick local guys. It makes well, one you're especially if they were decent in college, you're going to get some of those holdover fans from there, right? So, like Houston, for example, mm-hmm. anybody from Texas A&M, uh, people will come and check them out. Still, I think uh, Oklahoma for Dallas for sure, just because of the connections they have, and it just makes things easier. Like we were saying, I think. I think the players would probably want that too, you know. Dantes Alexander, wide receiver, Franklin College for the Rough. Deontes. Deontes, man. See, I'm bad with names. I'll just listen to the guys. <laughs> oh, I have it on mute. I'm, I'm just kind of watching the text come up. Yeah. Get over wow! The, so the rough the defenders went running back, uh, wide receiver running back. Hmm. Yeah, I don't think we're. I I will be surprised if June Joan picks up more than one tight end. I just don't see it. Uh, a lot of teams use two tight end setups now, but you want to spread as many draft picks across the board as you can. Yeah, and we'll probably. I would even expect them. He might even just wait till that open round. We could be stacking up wide receivers and running backs here. So how many we have? We have one. Getting up mostly wide receivers right now. Yeah. One, two, three. Three wide receivers and a so quarterback. Marcus Is Harris, that what we have? Wide receiver, Houston, New York Guardians. And we have a running back. Okay. So we have three wide receivers, running back, and a quarterback. Marcus Ayers, that's that's legit. I would have liked to have him on the Roughnecks. He's a uh, Houston wide receiver. Any relation to David Ayers? I don't know. Probably not. <laughs> I always think everybody's related to everybody. Sean Price, tight end, South Florida. Sean Price, Sean Price tight end, South Florida. Oh, shit. Dallas Renegades. Hey, guys, I'm about to... Uh, Get back on here in a bit. I gotta make a quick phone call. No, it's all good, man. Uh, that I missed the call, so I'll be back. Yep. Thank Just you. ping us, and I'll add you back into this group. All right. 
Okay, so we have the Vipers on the board. About a minute and 20 left for them to pick here. Overall, it's been an exciting day. We're officially halfway or over halfway through the phase one of this draft. Uh, plenty more phases to go. Two-day event. Uh, we're probably going to stop streaming around noon Eastern here, but you can check us out. Make sure you're subscribed on all of our channels, Facebook, Twitter, and Facebook. Or, she's Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube, as well as the Discord. Uh, we probably may do a post-draft event tomorrow with uh, with the uh, XF podcast, as well as this is the XFL podcast. Uh, we have a couple picks in here. Quentin Flowers for the Vipers and Wes Saxton for the Battlehawks. Quentin Flowers running back. Quentin right. Flowers is a running back out of South Florida. He's actually not a running back because when he played with the South Florida Bulls, he was a mobile quarterback. Um, yeah. So, yeah, and that's another thing too. Was I'm curious to see if all of these players stick with their their positions that they have, because I, I could see some people switching around. Not necessarily Connor Cook. Uh, <laughs> that's what I expected is somebody's going to pick up a quarterback in the first round. It may be to uh, supplement some different style of play, but uh, that, that doesn't seem to be the case so far, at least there. But we have two pe picks left in this fifth round of the first phase dragons and wildcats up looks like the dragons have made their pick this timer has ended here let's see who they got keenan reynolds wide receiver keenan reynolds navy, navy okay keenan reynolds is also a former quarterback hmm. he is the all-time leading rusher and passer for the navy midshipmen Nice to that's a that's a good stat. Yeah, I don't, I, you know, I'm not that great with the player stats sometimes. <laughs> oh, there's my dashboard. Falling a little behind on your uh, player tracker. Oh, I just haven't updated it. It should be well. I have updated it. I just haven't refreshed it. Let's take a look here. It should be up to date. Hopefully, unless I didn't save it. Yeah, it updated. Never mind. We're on time. Okay, there we the go. The Los Angeles Wildcats. Oh, they turned it off on me. Crap, that was a quick selection. Larry Rose running back. Yeah, Larry Rose running back. Okay, so... Four rounds left in the first phase. This is the skill phase. The next phase is the offensive line phase. And then they're moving into defense. So we have the front D7. We have the uh, defensive backs. And then what I think might be the most fun uh, phase of them all, that fifth and final open phase. Every team gets 30 picks to create a... 70-man roster, and that includes the Tier 1 quarterback. So 70 picks and one Tier 1 quarterback. Well, let's see who we got. So we have, what, the Wildcats back on the board here. Still no pick. Who's going to join Luis Perez in sunny Los Angeles? Well, so far, for the people who are not... Uh, we're not keeping track. The players that are joining Luis Perez as of right now are Elijah Hood, running back for North Carolina, Richard Ross, uh, wide receiver, uh, Nelson Spruce, wide receiver, Brandon Bar Barnes, tight end, and Larry Rose, running back. Yeah, and if you wanted to, on this oh, yeah. live tracker, you can do filtering. So you can go by pick, you can go by team, position, uh, even name if you wanted to. So, you know, take advantage of it. Get in where you fit in. Check out xflnewsroom.com daily. Find out why we're the number one source in XFL news. We're always having a good time. Uh, but let's see who the Wildcats pick. Under 50 seconds left for that pick here. This is their sixth pick in the draft. Man, they they read my mind. 
Oh, I think that's Carlos walking in with his uh, <laughs> with his phone on the YouTube. Oh, I see. Let's see, thirty seconds under thirty seconds. Let's see what we got. I expect the quarterback to go this round somewhere. Yeah, I'm sur- yeah. You know, honestly, I thought I was surprised we had a quarterback with second pick, but I'm. I'm I'm kind of surprised we haven't ha- seen more quarterbacks go. I think we've only had two picked in the draft so far. Oh, I'm back. Howdy, howdy. Uh, yeah, I heard you were you saying about the quarterback thing. It surprised the hell out of me, for sure. It's about as anti-NFL as it gets. <laughs> the Los Angeles Wildcats are on the clock. About time. Ah, the feeling you get when you get a phone call about a new job and you pass the background check. Hey, sign you up. Groovy. Heard somebody from Baylor. KD RG3. KD Cannon, wide receiver. Ooh. Baylor. In a surprising turn of events, Kevin Durant has been drafted by the Los Angeles Wildcats. <laughs> we'll see if it works out. The snake that he is. The snake that he is. <laughs> Couldn't even take a phone call from the Wizards. Dick. I can't really blame him either. How about the Nats, y'all? <laughs> Up three zero. Hey, give oh, me one second. It. I'm gonna go take a quick break. You guys hold down the fort for me here, real quick. But uh, yeah, hold it out a couple the minutes. Fort. All right, everybody, it's party time. In the sixth round, Dragon. the Seattle select, the Seattle Dragons select Evan Rodriguez, Uh-oh. tight end, Temple. Yet another tight end. Battlehawks, you are on the clock. The I'm... Seattle, the St. Louis Battlehawks are now on the clock in the sixth round of the XFL draft. I heard him, good sir. Oh, uh, sorry. <laughs> Ooh, that was quick. Marcus Lucas from Missouri. Missouri. Missouri A? A. Definitely not as familiar with him. Again, St. Louis sticking with the regional uh, picks. Uh, You got a guy from Missouri. So, and they just got another wide receiver from Nebraska. So they're sticking with that regional. These are the guys that were in their uh, showcase. So I think that is uh, something to be looking at for other later draft picks as well. The Tampa Bay Vipers, the fourth pick of the sixth round, select Cole Wick, tight end from Iconic Word. Uh, I'm going to be honest. I really don't know any knowledge of people in this type of area, to say the least, but... I could tell that the Tampa Bay Vipers are drafting tight ends with Aaron Murray, uh, that Georgia Bulldog type of offense. So I expect how Tampa Bay is developing. I think they might be a power running team. So that could be a thing to look forward to with the offensive line picks later in the round. With the fifth pick in the sixth round, the Dallas Renegades select Kevin McKnight, wide receiver from Stanford. Kelvin McKnight. Excuse me, Kelvin McKnight. We are butchering these guys' names. (laughs) (laughs) Starting quarterback for the New England Patriots, uh, Tyree Brady? Who that? Who? 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 So as you can tell with these picks right here, they are becoming quicker, which you kind of figured. Um, names I'm still surprised I haven't seen on the board yet. Uh, uh, like Trent Richardson, RJ Scott, to name a few of uh, a few guys. So it's uh, you know it's very interesting that these guys haven't been selected. So I'm not. Surprise, but then again, I'm not the guy who's been watching these practices and these um, showcases that have been going on throughout the league for like the last couple of weeks. 
Yeah, you know, Trent Richardson not being up here is surprising, but there is something, too. Uh, some of these guys may not even be available for, for the pool anymore. We saw, what is it, Akeem Nix, he's out. Uh, a couple other huh. folks, so that may be that may be why that may be the unfortunate truth here. Not to say that we they could definitely still end up in the supplementary drafts because they may not still be wherever they are now, right? Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it, that is an interesting one. I it, that one kind of passed me up. Trent Richardson not on the board yet. I would assume then he's probably not in the pool because he seems like somebody that would be. Um, well, you would thought maybe a first round pick potentially i was certain of it i would have picked him up but maybe he's not available or with maybe this, teams are having the mentality of we need to have blocking first with the sixth pick of the sixth round the new york guardians select ej bibbs tight end iowa state they call him mr bibbs what nobody watching the heat of the night <laughs> damn it Oh, you're by yourself there, bro. My my grandma used to watch in the heat of the night. <laughs> <I'm> just... Awesome. <laughs> also, Murder She Wrote, which is a very good show. <laughs> it's all about Matlock. Dude, Matlock is my favorite. Matlock and Columbo, sign uh -huh. me up. Columbo is awesome. This is what you like to call some expert draft coverage. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> I think we're showing our age here a little bit. <laughs> There's probably people in the chat, what the hell's a Columbo? <laughs> Seventh pick of the sixth round, the Houston Roughnecks select Cam Phillips, wide receiver, Virginia Tech. Dude, Ooh. they have like Far all wide receivers. Yeah, two quarterbacks, all wide receivers. We have one it. running back, two quarterbacks, and the rest of the picks have been wide receivers. But I, I said this earlier this morning. I expected a lot of wide receivers coming from uh, Houston. June Jones, he, he wants, well, he has two guys to throw the ball and a crap load of guys to catch it now. So can't blame him. With the Charles six, Orson. With the eighth Georgia. pick of the sixth round, the D.C. defenders select Charles Olson Charles, tight end, Georgia. Okay, yeah, we're starting to see these teams pick their tight ends. And not well, my prediction of a quarterback in this round went down the drain quickly. I think we, all of ours did. We all lost money. Yeah. That's why I don't bet on sports anymore. Unless I'm in Vegas. It's just something about actually sports gambling in Vegas that, whew, it's just so fun. I would like to think I was uh, Robert De Niro in Casino. You were what? I'm sorry? I, I'd like to pretend that I'm Robert De Niro in Casino. Yeah. <laughs> The guy always made money, and he made sure to whack it up with the fellas. So we're on break here, going into the seventh round of the first phase, back at the top of the list with the defenders, then the Roughnecks, Guardians, Renegades, Vipers, Battlehawks, Dragons, and Wildcats. We have the Tier 1 quarterbacks that have been announced scrolling across the bottom of the screen there. Uh, so if you wanted to know or if you didn't know already, there they are. Uh, we have about one hour left before we're going to stop streaming today, so make sure you click all the links in the description, subscribe, comment, check us out on Facebook, Twitter, and since we're on YouTube, you know, click the buttons there as well. We're joined here with the folks from the XF Podcast. You should make sure to check them out. Like I said, we have a link in the description to their channel, so go, go and subscribe. It's Hey, we all like extra XFL content. This is the best time to be an XFL fan. We have, we're learning all the stuff firsthand as it comes through. So, you know, there's not very many opportunities that you have with sports leagues like this. Uh, we had it with the AAF for a little bit last year, but it definitely wasn't as full of fan engagement as we're seeing the XFL and uh, financially stable for that matter. Uh, but, you know, we're having a good time. We're here for the long haul. We're always doing some things on Discord probably going to start doing some more videos every friday at 11 a.m eastern 8 a.m pacific you can check out this week in the xfl with your host me the referee uh and we're probably going to start doing some pre-week sh streams and post-game streams once the season kicks off uh probably throughout my channel as well as the xf podcast channel uh so you'll make sure make sure you uh you're subscribed to both to see when all the latest videos are coming 
We have about 30 seconds left until the next round kicks off. We just have two more rounds. Oh, I'm sorry. Three more rounds in this first phase here. So we're we're getting we're getting to the wire there. We're getting to the wire. Uh, let's 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 head to chat here. So what uh, what is everyone thinking of the draft so far? Exciting things that you would like to see done differently. Players you're surprised that have been picked, or as we were just talking about, haven't been picked yet. Let us know your thoughts. We're here. We're having a good time. I said probably my first critique. It'd be nice if they had put this like on Fox Sports One or something. I was kind of I was surprised that they didn't uh, put this on live television at all. Yeah, you know, I, I think, and I think the re the reasoning behind all of that is a couple things. Is one, I, I really think the XFL wants their first televised presentation to be something memorable, right? And there is a lot of names that we know in this draft, and there's a lot of names that. To your average Joe, they, they aren't going to know who they are. So I don't think they're going to get the impact that they want. Uh, now, looking forward into the future, I think if the league makes it to the third year, that's when we're going to start seeing some of these bigger, more elaborate events, right? Because all of the contracts are on two years. They have the coaches, the tier ones, and the TV deals are all on two years. So that second year is going to be make or break, right? Uh, so going into that, that third season, if they renew those contracts, it's a good opportunity to renew it and say, hey, we want some extra televised events. Uh, but we have Don Donnell Pumphrey, running back for the Defenders from San Diego State. Probably butchered that name as well, so I apologize. Uh, but we're, we're making our way. We're less than three rounds officially now. You know, yeah, I do Pumphrey. I do videos. I don't do a lot of live streaming, and you never estimate how much talking will hurt your voice. My, I'm like, my voice is killing me, right? My throat is killing me right now. <laughs> I thought I talked a lot, but I, apparently I don't <laughs> because I'm like dry mouth today. But I got some Powerade. Just power your way through it. Yeah, that's right. You know, I'll tell you something. Maybe it's me. I don't know if you drink Powerade or Gatorade, but something has changed. I don't drink a lot of a lot of energy sports drinks or energy drinks for that matter. But I picked one up the other day. It was just it was the right amount of hot outside. I said, you know, good good Gatorade sounds good. And dude, they I, I don't know. They must have changed it because when I was a kid, it it to me what I remember was it was more of like water with a little bit of flavor in it. And now I'm, I feel like I'm just drinking, like, Hawaiian Punch. <laughs> I don't feel like this is, this is just Hawaiian sugar. Hawaiian Punch. No, I want a Hawaiian Punch. Oh, <laughs> Jalen Sanders, wide receiver Ooh. from Oklahoma, going to Roughnecks. That's a name I'm surprised we haven't seen on the board yet, but good. The, the Roughnecks are going all in on wide receivers. This is pretty pretty crazy here so we have one running back two quarterbacks and the rest of the picks have been wide receivers i would expect we're going to get a running back another running back soon but like i said don't be surprised if we don't see june jones pick up a tight end in this first phase i would not be surprised Well, it's also you can see that the Roughnecks are also developing an offense that's very known as a spread them West Coast type of offense so far. Mm -hmm. The quarterback, uh, Philip Walker, plus the receivers. Looks like this is going to be a we'll spread them out five wide type of ordeal, and we're going to throw the ball over the yard on you. That's so an offense I think the Roughnecks are adapting well, this too, you know, this is something I've been thinking about uh, since since they drafted Connor Cook. Looking at the way that the league is structured with multiple forward passes, I think we might see a significant amount of plays where Houston runs with two quarterbacks on the field, which hmm. that's pretty interesting. That could be fun to two, watch. Two quarterbacks? Could have. Didn't say, uh, the Saints did it last year? Well, yeah, but... Uh... Uh, the guy that we got wrong, it wasn't Joe Hill, uh, Tamar, Tamar Hill or Tanar Hill. God, I can never remember his name properly. 
that yeah, I could, yeah, I guess it's possible. But how many really good quarterback slash receivers are out there? Yeah, I don't know. It just I, ever well, since we got that pick right away, something there's something in my head. There's there's a reason they did that, especially with all these wide receivers. They are passing. They are going to be a passing high offense team. Philip Nelson. So here's your quarterback. We have Philip yeah. Nelson for the Renegades. So they got their back up here. Hmm. So we have, if I get this right, Nelson and Brennell Hall. Bogan uh, Bobak, 11th pick to St. Louis. Nelson, Connor Cook are the three backups already selected. So we got five teams are looking for backup quarterbacks. I do expect them to get a quarterback in this in this phase before the uh, free for all at the end of the end of the draft that comes tomorrow. I'm sorry, what team were you talking about? We already have three backup quarterbacks. Connor Cook, uh Roback, who's in uh, St. Louis, and Wilson, who is in Dallas. We got five more teams that are still looking for backup quarterbacks. Oh, I got you. Uh, Renegades, they just picked one up here. So they got uh, Philip Nelson. So we have Imagine. a couple more teams, but yeah, they will start probably picking them up here in these rounds. I, I think you're right. We got Matt highlight. Jones, yeah, who's highlight. now a battle hawk. The XFL highlighted Matt Jones on their previous last release. Releasement of players. So Matt Jones is a battle hawk running back out of the University of Florida. Two more picks in this round, then we have two rounds left in the first phase. We're getting there. We're getting there. And yeah, the picks seem to be getting a little bit faster here. So we have Dragons look like they're about to make their pick. Kaysen Williams. Kaysen Williams. That's another good one. I'd love that they're not taking absolutely forever to get this done. Yeah. Like, bing, bang, boom. Yeah, that's well, that's the way it should be, right? Um, now, again, a couple of years from now, this could turn into something different. Uh, it could be much more elaborate. But honestly, I like this. I like this better, you know. Um, and it's also interesting to me. I don't know if we talked about this on Crosstalk. We probably talked about it on Discord at some point. But it is interesting that the... WWE decided to move their draft and organize the XFL draft basically right next to each other. Right? We had the WWE draft kicked off Friday, ended yesterday, and then we have the XFL draft today and tomorrow. Now, I don't know why they did that. It doesn't seem like they have much crossover between the two groups because this is a real draft and the other one isn't. <laughs> but uh, Martez Carter, running back. Grambling State for the Wildcats. Mart Martez. I thought, it, I thought it said Gambling State for a moment. That's that's the college I want to go to. <laughs> Las Vegas. Wait a minute! I thought that was every college to go to. Yeah. <laughs> you gamble and you give them money and you never get the returns. One thing I could not understand about the WWE draft was how the hell did Lucha Party get drafted first before Daniel Bryan or Seth Rollins? What sense did that make? Yeah, honestly, I don't even. I tuned into part of SmackDown and I didn't watch the draft. I just didn't watch it last night. I have tickets to Rumble, so I should Ooh. probably get caught up on it. I know Royal Rumble's the one that I've always wanted to go to. I've been to the rest of the Big Four. I've been to Mania. I've been to Survivor Series. I went to SummerSlam in 1993 at uh, Palace of Auburn Hill. It was the absolute worst SummerSlam in history. It's the It was the Lex Luger versus Yokozuna DQ ending. <laughs> oh, my God. No, not even a DQ. A count out. A count out. And they celebrated like he won the title. Yeah, they had the mess. balloons popping and everything. I, man, I hate myself as a kid because I really wanted Lex Luger to win. <laughs> like Everybody every time I watch it now, that. I'm like, wow, what is wrong with you? Uh, but there is, there's one good match on that whole card, and it's, uh, it's Jerry Lawler versus Bret Hart. Bret Hart puts him in the sharpshooter and won't let go, and he gets DQ'd, and he holds it on him for like five minutes. It's it's pretty cool. It's pretty good. That's the only good piece of that that pay-per-view. 
And so you can't go wrong with two excellent technical wrestlers like that. They Jerry both Lawler. know exactly what they're doing. Holy crap. Jerry King Lawler was awesome in Memphis. I'm just going to yeah. s- uh, say this, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Mm-hmm. As you know, I'm following the s- XFL social media. Mm-hmm. Yesterday, the Tampa Bay Vipers. Randy Orton's. And to obey Randy Orton's. There you go. Had 13,152 social media followers on Twitter. Today, it's at 14,257. Nice. That's a thousand thousand followers in a 24-hour period. What the hell are we doing wrong? (laughs) Yeah, we'll get there. You know, that's the thing. Small moves, small moves. It's it's things like this that'll help. Keep doing the uh, you know live streaming is huge. Oh, let's see here. Well, the Wildcats got nine hundred more votes than. Well, the Wildcats came in at ten thousand two hundred thirty-four like yesterday, and today, as of right now, ten thousand nine hundred and sixteen. I wonder so, how much the XFL, like the main account, has grown too. That's actually it's probably at like twenty four thousand. I think it last was the oh, last shit. time I checked. It was at one hundred and forty three thousand. One hundred forty three thousand one hundred and twenty seven people. That was the last time the XFL had theirs. It has gone up four thousand. I'm going to load it here. I'm just pulling up their social blade. It just hasn't updated. So, yeah, we're at 147.101 for the XFL on Twitter. Sign them up. So they're, they're making some moves there. Getting the word out there, gaining some fans. You should do the same for us. We're also on Twitter and Facebook at XFL Newsroom. You guys are on face, uh, on Twitter. I don't know if you're on Facebook, but at XF Podcast. So make sure to give us follows there as well. We're having a good time. If you want to know when we're going to be doing streams, new videos, new articles, whatever it may be, that's where you're going to find it. So sign yourself up and let's uh, let's have a good time. We still have a a giveaway going on in the Discord. I don't know how we are with that. So click the link down in the description, and the 10th person is going to win a snazzy XFL hat, just like the one I'm wearing. Uh, I don't have my stream up. I'll, I'll pull myself up here. Just like this one. So sign everyone up there. We're having a good time. I, I got too lazy. I'm sure my audio sounds like garbage because I just didn't want to figure out my lavalier mic and live streaming. But maybe next time. Maybe next time. But uh, let's move back to the screen here. So we got Kyrie. Oh. Or Car- That's Caris Garrett and John Santigo. Okay, two wide receivers. Wow, so this is the XFL show. It became the unofficial podcast of the XFL. Are we all the unofficial? <laughs> yeah, I think that, I think that we fall into that carry show too. Is at the headquarters doing the live stream there. Yeah, I saw that. Well, they live right around the block from. Uh, at least uh, the main one, the main guy that runs it, he lives fairly close to it. So that's understandable. I got an invite to the they, – they weren't doing anything in Houston, but I got an invite to head out to uh, Dallas. But there's no way I'm going to make a three-hour drive just for some media event later tonight. Um, eh, it is what it is. But uh, we will be covering the event this Thursday, post-draft celebration with the Houston Roughnecks. Uh, Coach June Jones will be there, probably some other folks, definitely the president, Brian Michael Cooper, top-notch guys, always a good time to hang out with. It's also a great way to learn about the XFL right from the people that are creating it. Um, You guys plan it? So, Carlos, movie guy, you're you're closer to D.C., right? Yeah, yeah. Are you, uh, have have you gone to any of the Q&As? I think they've had one out there so far, or plan on it. I uh, wouldn't mind. I've been more focusing on uh, getting my my job situation all worked out. No, I <laughs> got you. Yeah, no, that we makes. Just did this morning. Yeah, no. Well, hopefully that gets sorted. Yeah, I, work work sucks. <laughs> 
It does. Also, if you're a student, because I've been working on my IT certification and trying to find a better job that will provide me better benefits. Yeah. And this one is going to give me a 401k and health and dental insurance. Hey, so, sign you up. You yeah. can't beat that. Got to move up in the world. But I will be trying to uh, definitely go to XFL games around here. But I haven't really seen a whole lot of promotion. I haven't seen very many opportunities to uh, to meet up with the team. Yeah, I think they've only done one one event so far. The tickets are cheap as chips, though. They're, like, dirty cheap. I think they're, what, 20 bucks for DC for the low end? And at the high end, I think it was, like, 85 or 90 bucks for, like, front row center. Mm-hmm. Sign me that up. That's correct. Sign me up. Yeah, I got my Roughnecks tickets. I'm ready. I'm, I, I can't wait. Just extra extra football things to do. Oh, finally, the Guardians made their pick. Justin Stockton, running back from Texas Tech. Well, another, but it's Lance a, Dunbar. Yeah, Lance, Lance Dunbar is a very familiar name, especially for the people in Dallas, as he's a former running back for the Dallas Cowboys. I knew I knew that name somewhere. <laughs> I just didn't put two and two together. That's pretty. That's pretty legit pick. Yep. I'm, so, I'm, more, I'm more familiar with Quentin Dunbar. Is that okay. a reference? I don't. I'm not a movie guy. If that's a movie thing. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, he's uh, he plays cornerback for the for the Redskins. Oh, that's why I don't know him. He plays for the Redskins. <laughs> Nobody knows him. <laughs> <laughs> Don't feel bad, man. I'm a Lions fan. Speaking of which, man, we got screwed last night, but that's nothing yeah. new. Everybody's now realizing the refs in the NFL are garbage. I'm a Lions fan. We've known. We've known for years. Ever since ever since I was a kid, the, the referees have been our strongest opponent. <laughs> it was BS. I mean, I didn't even see the whole game, but I saw some of the calls, and I was like, what are they doing? They're making this blatantly obvious now that they really want Aaron Rodgers in the playoffs. Yeah, and I don't get that, too. Aaron Rodgers, I don't want to talk bad about him. He's not a bad quarterback, but I don't know, man. He's no Tom Brady. Oh. Yeah. You know? His athleticism is off the charts, but the rest of the team has been kind of falling apart around him, so that makes him look worse. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm waiting for them to pick up a quarterback and have what happened to uh, the guy he replaced happen to him. God, what the gee, why can Brett, I not? Brett, Brett Favre, Favre. Yeah. Favre. <laughs> <laughs> Brett Favor. So I always like talking to like non-football fans when they're like, oh, that Brett Favor guy, he's my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> With the seventh pick of the eighth round. Houston Roughnecks select Devin Gray, wide receiver, Cincinnati. Dude, they are loading up on wide receivers. Loading up on wide receivers. They have one running back, what, five then? Six six wide receivers, one running back, and two quarterbacks? Yeah, two two uh, running backs this, this round, and the rest is nothing but wide receivers. And they're, oh, Max McCaffrey, another wide receiver for the defenders there. Yeah. That's uh, Christian McCaffrey's brother. Oh, so he's related yeah. to Ed McCaffrey. Maybe. Yep. <laughs> I don't know. I'm pretty yeah, sure he Christian is, McCaffrey is the son of Ed McCaffrey. It, 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 I don't know. If he's the brother, he has to be related to Ed <laughs> See, I don't know that much. Yeah, you guys, I don't know. <laughs> so the big pick out of the eighth round was Lance Dunbar. He is a guy who had quarter, uh, running back experience in the NFL. From the University of North Texas. Um, I know Redskin fans don't want to mention it, but I just mm-hmm. looked at the stat. His, uh, uh, I know you're going to hate this, uh, Carlos, but his biggest gain, his biggest career yardage as a player came against your Redskins. I have no idea what you're talking about. That's Lance Dunbar. Yep. Oh, uh, I remember. I prefer not to talk about that. <laughs> so he that's he had his biggest game was of his career was against your Houston or your well, my Houston. My Texas. Houston. Your <laughs> your uh Washington Redskins, so let's go Nets. That's how I feel about the Redskins this year. Huh. 
Mike Tomlin to the Redskins is far fetched. Well, of course it is. Why would he want to come here? That would make that'd be like the worst <laughs> decision ever. Unless he's trying to retire immediately afterwards, because Lord knows we'll pay him. So we, you think, uh, you think uh, Gruden's going to end up in in Oakland with his brother? Oh, definitely. Either that, or just go somewhere as, a, as, a, as a quarterbacks coach somewhere. Yeah, that dude was trying to get fired. <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen anyone try so hard to get fired from a team. Um, yeah, I don't. I don't blame him. I mean, they 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 they're still paying him right now. They owe him money through twenty twenty. Uh, I was reading an interview with him. Uh, I can't remember who who conducted it, but basically he was like, "Yeah, man, he is hanging out without a care in the world. Like he's going down and playing poker, stepping out to bars, enjoying time with his wife. Like he is a happy man because he's free." Yeah. Uh, and that's just like what uh, Antonio Brown. I fully expect him to be back in the NFL by the end of the season. And I, and I'll say this with the Patriots, I still he, think it's going to happen. I think he's going to end up back there. I, I think don't know about that. He's going to take get, a season he's get his off. Legal issues out of the way. That I'll tell you this: by the time the playoffs kick off, that stuff's going to be taken care of, and somebody. Well, I'll say this: somebody who's going into the playoffs will pick him up as a ringer. Basically, right? Somebody that it's just that extra player that hopefully puts you over the top if you're there. And when you're looking to win a championship, you might do it, dude. What? If, throw them on the Chiefs. Pfft, I don't want to see it. But they'll win. They'll beat the they'll beat the Patriots with with Antonio Brown and and their quarterback. And uh, I don't know. I don't know. But yeah, that's that's my hot take for the day. <laughs> non XFL related hot take. Ouch, it burns. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Tyree Jackson. Jackson, quarterback, Al Buffalo. Okay, so we're, now Finally. we're getting our quarterbacks. I'm, I'm cool with that pick. Definitely down with that. All right, rough next. Are you, are you, I, I say, you know what, let's just do this. Wide receiver or a third quarterback. Come on. Come on, let's make it happen. <laughs> How about O Lyman? That's the next phase. Oh, that's correct. Yes, I keep forgetting that's not how they're doing drafts. It's so hard getting used to this to this format. I was gonna say after this round, I will probably have to make a move though because I need to go meet up with my new job. Cause I got orientation tomorrow and I gotta pick up some paperwork. All right, ahead, bro. Yeah, I figured probably after this phase, we'll probably just end the stream. There's really no reason to go on to, into the next one because I think we'll probably be wrapping up around noonish anyway. So. Figure, yeah, we'll stream for this first phase, uh, but then, yeah, you know, you guys are welcome. We're probably going to do a post game, uh, post draft stream tomorrow uh, with uh, at least J Dash and uh, Tron Hawkins from This Is the XFL podcast. Uh, so you'll make sure you want to check in there as well. Uh, Roughnecks, okay, finally stopped the clock. Let's see who we got here. Running back, Andre Williams. Hey, there we go. Nice. I thought they were going to take Warren Moon. I was so certain of it. <laughs> they would if they could. Trust it. Bring out the rocking chair. No disrespect to Warren Moon. Actually, that is kind of the most backhanded thing I think I've ever said. <laughs> I'm sorry, Warren Moon. Please don't hurt me. I wasn't going to say anything. That's why I stay silent on my end. That's usually the case. I'm the one that makes a fool of myself. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and having fun doing it. Ah. So we got what? Two more rounds after it? One more round after this one? Yeah, one more round after this one finishes up here. And then, uh, like I said, we'll probably end this stream there. Uh, 
I may be joining a couple other streams tonight. I, I know, uh, what was it, uh, John Turner from A Football World wanted me to join, so I'll probably be on there later tonight, I think 7 Eastern, um, but still need to confirm with him. And then tomorrow, uh, post-draft coverage, and then uh, we got a new pick for the Guardians here, Darius Victor, running back. Hmm. Towson. Ah, uh, God, that name rings a bell, but uh, not familiar. Yeah, we're but getting Tom, to that point in the draft where some of these names are going to be a little tough, but let's take a look. He was on, looks like a couple practice squads, and most recently was on the Hamilton Tiger Cats uh, last year, it looks like. couple practice squads for the Saints and the Arizona Cardinals. Pretty decent college stats here. Uh, overall, 3,300 yards rushing over his four-year career. Average 5.2 yards per carry. 41 touchdowns. That's that's all respectable. 41 touchdowns. That's pretty damn good. Uh, let's see here. Dallas, Dallas Renegades take Donald Parham. Okay. And uh, Taylor Cornelius. Taylor Cornelius. Stay, taken by the Vipers. So they're getting their backup QB here. You know, I don't know how people do these like 12 hour streams. <laughs> I'm like, I'm worn out after like two. Jeez. Cocaine. Yeah, probably. I would uh, <laughs> cocaine and energy drinks. They're always drinking that. Uh, what was it? G Fuel. Got to give me some G Fuel, bro. Some gamer energy drink. Whoa. Shake the hell out of them and then send them off into the world. Yeah. Oh, we got Alonzo Russell from Holy Toledo. Toledo. You know, Toledo used to be part of Michigan, and uh, I think we got the better better deal on that one. We got the Upper Peninsula, and Ohio got Toledo. And you know what's in Toledo? Not much. Nothing. <laughs> you drive through it to get to Cedar Point. <laughs> That's about it. <laughs> <laughs> you ever go to Cedar Point? You're from the Midwest-ish area? Nope. No, oh, man. dude, you got to It's America's roller coast. It's the one thing I miss about living in the Midwest. Well, two things. Cedar Point and White Castle. Ooh, sign me up. White Castle is delicious. Do White I can't Castle. Really get it frozen out here. That's it. Uh, same here. Yeah. And I'll tell you this. They're actually not bad if you steam them. Now, if you microwave steam, them, they're okay. Steamed hams, huh? Yeah. It, quite literally, yeah. And But oh, I actually had some yesterday for dinner. <laughs> so White Castle. They were good. We got Cam Clear from Texas A&M. Another tight end taken by Seattle. Okay, almost to the last round here. So far, we've seen a couple things. We've seen, uh looks like Tampa Bay's going smaller school. Houston's going full-on pass offense. With uh, They've only gotten two running backs so far. They have two quarterbacks, and the rest of the picks have been wide receivers. So I think they're at seven, seven wide receivers so far, which is has to be more than the rest of the teams because we've been seeing a good mix. No tight ends yet, but like I said, I I expected that. Still no Trent Richardson on the board, so I'm I got to assume he's not in the draft pool. I would I wouldn't expect him to be this far in the draft, but hey, we still have one pick and one round left. So maybe maybe this is where it comes. It would be very surprising for him not to be picked up. I mean, it's shocking he hasn't been taken already. Another tight end, Scott Orndoff. Paul Orndoff? Yeah. Mr. Wonderful? That's his kid. I don't know. Oh, damn. <laughs> oh, damn. I thought you were serious. <laughs> <laughs> so we're officially in the last round of the first phase. Let's get excited, folks. Like I said, we have a giveaway going on in the Discord, so click the link. Tenth person that gets in there is going to win an XFL hat. 
Uh, we're also announcing the winner of the 1,000 sub subscriber giveaway this Friday on This Week in the XFL with your host, the referee. That's me getting signed up, as always. We also have some other links in that description, so make sure you go subscribe to my boys, the XF Podcast. And you know what? Give us a follow on Facebook and Twitter as well, at XFL Newsroom and okay, at XF well. Podcast. Boom. Shill mode. I'm getting pretty good at that. <laughs> Say it's something like enough. Practicing. Yeah, pretty much. That's what I'm using this for. How do I how do I not take so many takes when I'm sitting here recording my other show? You know, the worst, I'm sure this has happened to you guys too. You record a full episode, you go get to the end of it, and the audio's off. Oh man, I did that the like two weeks ago. Recorded like 25 minutes, and I was like, oh, that went really well. And there was no audio on. I was like, oh, I'm an idiot. <laughs> that has happened a couple of times. That shit does suck uh, because oh. you gotta put, you got to get yourself back in the right mindset. But no matter what you do, you're not going to be able to say exactly what it was that you had just previously said. Oh, yeah, exactly. And, uh, yeah, sometimes it works out for the better. Sometimes I've had better takes of it. But, yeah, sometimes it, like, psychs you out where you're like, man... I just did all of that, <laughs> you know. You know, so that's another name that I'm surprised we haven't seen. Ryan Broyles. We haven't seen Ryan Broyles get picked up yet. He was somebody oh, that they highlighted. Oh, give a second. Houston will pick him up somehow. I'm hoping. I want Ryan Broyles on the Roughnecks. He, he was not too bad for the Lions. He was there for a, a cup of coffee. Cup of coffee. Yeah, cream and a crap. And right when you said that, I spilled my freaking drink. <laughs> Damn you. Damn you, you dirty hips. Damn you, macho man. From the grave. Oh, man, I know. Hey, he saved us from the, whatever, the, the rapture. So that was pretty cool. I don't know if you remember that. We're in a time of darkness, yeah. <laughs> I remember that was that was a great. It was a sad day, but a great meme. Because <laughs> that was the I can't remember which guy, but it was you know every every few years we have a good apocalypse theory, and uh, that was the big one. And then poor Macho Man was the only one. He was the only one good enough to go to heaven. <laughs> we all suck. <laughs> Just picture God up there holding his little bit of uh, milk and creamer. <laughs> yeah, right. Here you are, buddy. You cream of the crap. Man, I miss the good old days of wrestling. It's still good. No, it is still good. Don't get me wrong. But I think it's mainly a lot of it's nostalgia. That's you, know, you see a lot of people complain online today. A lot of people remember like the Ninja Turtles cartoon being awesome. Trust it. It's okay. <laughs> it's okay. That's it. You know. Oh, there's there's good stuff in there. Yeah, I like the the turtles and the Ghostbusters are pretty good. The Ghostbusters is good because it's actually they made it pretty creepy sometimes, at least for a kid, right? That show was awesome. Oh, real quick, uh, Dantia Die from Heidelberg. I am definitely not familiar with him. Picked up by the Los Angeles Wildcats. Yeah, that one's uh, just... that one's a new name for me. So then again, I'm 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 going with the theory that one Trent, Trent Richardson is not in this draft pool anymore. I would guess neither is Ryan Broyles because in this last, I would ex I would I would ex expect that those two guys would have gone in this first phase and not held over into that open round. But maybe maybe like. Uh, uh, J Dash said earlier, maybe they saw something that we didn't at these showcases. You know, it could be a protected player. That is true too. We were talking. I don't know if you were on the stream yet. Uh, we were talking about that. The possibility that beyond tier one quarterbacks, I wonder if we'll start seeing other tiered players assigned to teams. Like, I don't. I wouldn't expect a tier one wide receiver and a tier one running back. But I could see a, a tiered one of those, right? You're either going to get a running back or a wide receiver in one of those tiered groups. I could see that happening. Oh, Malachi Jones, wide receiver, Appalachian State. And actually, from what I remember, uh, I think I've seen a couple of his highlight videos and some stuff from the uh, showcase that he was at. He seemed pretty pretty legit. So, okay. We only have a few more picks left in this first phase. 
It's been a good day. It's been a great day. It's been the best day. We're hanging out. It's the XFL Draft 2019. First XFL Draft of the new era, at least. Uh, already showing the benefits, right? Social media. Uh, there's a lot more people talking about the draft this time around than they were the last time. We have another pick in here. We have two picks. We have Jordan Lashley for the Battle Hawks and Alonzo Moore for the Vipers. Huh. I did just notice something interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, if, I, if I remember correctly, the XFL said they don't want players with criminal records. Mm -hmm. I don't remember this happening, but on February 16, 2017, Trent Richardson was arrested on third-degree domestic violence in Hoover, Alabama. Hmm. Now, I wonder if that has anything to do with it. I don't know, because he was at the showcase. So you would think they would have made that decision by then. Um, but that may be why he's further down the list if he's still in the pool. Yeah, it's possible somebody just didn't look at his Wikipedia page and like, uh, uh, uh they Vince, found out yesterday. Um, <laughs> we we kind of got a problem here. Yeah, I, I think they've, I think they've backed away from that a little bit. Now, clearly, they don't want like Antonio. Yeah, they don't want like convicted criminals, like hardcore criminals, in there. Uh, but I could see people with maybe a DWI or something like that getting in. Not that I want to encourage that type of behavior. Trust me, you don't want to drink and drive. It costs a lot of money. <laughs> it's bad. And yeah. it's dangerous. It's That's bad. the most important. It's dangerous. You could hurt someone, or even yourself. And or both. Yeah. In see? all seriousness. Yeah, see, you got I... Dimitri Flowers running back from Oklahoma, taken by the Dallas Renegades. I'm actually surprised he's so far up in this pool, too. But there he is. Stoops picking his Oklahoma guys. Looks like what a shock! Up. Yeah, I think he has yeah, at least pick up. three Oklahoma guys, including Landry Jones, on his team so far. Which again makes sense. Marquise Williams, quarterback for the New York Guardian. Two huh. picks left. What are you gonna be? Going That's for it. another running back, another wide receiver. What do we got, my man? Let's go rough next. Rough him up. This is completely random, but it looks like Sony is going to give Carnage a villainous love interest in the upcoming Venom sequel. Ooh. I imagine that's going to be Shriek. Can't imagine it being anybody else but Shriek. Yeah, I don't know much about the Marvel stuff. I was always a DC person when I was younger. And I'm oh, going to say... Oh, yeah. I'm, Same here. I'm all about DC over here. Dude, I wish they would make a Lobo movie and not... And, 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 and keyword, do it right. Kind of like they did with Deadpool. Deadpool was another one I was worried about, but they, they like, legit did it right. Uh, but Lobo, I have a feeling if they did it, it would either be very boring or very, like, mild toned down. Oh. I Which it know. can't Lobo be. Is, Lobo's batshit crazy. I mean, he destroyed his own his own planet. I know. He committed mass genocide. <laughs> Doesn't get much more outrageous than that. That's another one, too, man. I really wish... Okay, Nick Holly, running back for the Ooh. Roughnecks. So we're ending it off with a running back, giving us a couple there. So that's our third. Um, DC Defenders last. Let's see what we got. Last pick of the first phase of the first... XFL draft of the new era. Get excited, folks. Get live. We're having a good time. It's about time for a break. Time for some lunch. Time for another Powerade. But hey, click the links. Have a good time. Sign you up. Last pick. About a minute left on the clock here. Let's see what the defenders are going to go for. They already have a backup quarterback. We've seen them pick up a few key running backs and wide receivers so far. I'm not sure if they have a tight end just yet, so maybe that's what we'll see. As suspected, no tight ends for the Roughnecks. They did not pick one tight end in the first phase. Uh, I would expect if we see them, they're coming in that fifth phase, but I wouldn't expect a lot of them. Well, let's see who we got here. About 35 seconds left for the defenders. And then we're moving up. 
to the O-line, but we're going to stop streaming here in between these phases. 29 seconds has stopped. Looks like it's last Adam book. Robinson. Uh, it's uh, Adrian Fine. Robinson. Adrian. Adrian! Yeah, there we go. Ending it out strong with a tight end. All right. So, so far, let's uh, do a quick little outro. I'll let you guys go. What uh, what are you guys thinking so far? So far, so good. Uh, I'm enjoying the drive. My only issue with it is that, uh, I don't know, seeing a stopwatch timer at the bottom right corner, kind of, I don't know how to put it. It comes across as kind of cheap, but... Uh, you know, it's their first draft ever, yeah. so I won't hold it against them. Yeah, you know, you live, you learn. You can't all be as fancy as we we are here at the XFL newsroom, <laughs> 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 where we just <laughs> we just update a spreadsheet and stream snipe them. <laughs> but <laughs> plus enough. <laughs> yeah, we're getting there. We're getting there. But uh, dude, it was good hanging out with you guys. Um, any any parting words before I let you go? I guess I'll, uh, before I pass it over to James, make sure to follow us at XF Podcast at Wrestling Movie G. Make sure to check out the Discord. Uh, I think that's all for right now. It was good hanging out with you, man. Good having, uh, we'll have to do more of these. Like I said, we're probably going to do a post-draft stream tomorrow after the fifth phase wraps up just to kind of go over, you know, any of the big names, crazy changes, things like that. Um... But J Dash, any any last words for you? No, it's pretty interesting. Very fast phase in which the NFL adapted this type of thing. Um, even though that there's still, I don't know how many more players are going to be drafted today and to tomorrow. Um, but I like the format. It's pretty interesting. We get to see what so far. We get to see how these teams are going to be constructed. So as of right now, we could tell that Michigan is not Michigan. No, Houston is going to be spread. Uh, Dallas is going to have some form of that offense. And it looks like DC is going to be a, a pounding running type team. So we're starting to see what these teams are going to be constructed. And of course, post game, uh, post draft tomorrow night, I'll definitely be on. And uh, a new XF podcast will be coming out pretty soon, talking about the draft. So just keep following us on Discord and, and here at the XFL Newsroom. And always remember, always free, fan-powered, and your voice. Well, sign you guys up. It was great having you. I'm going to let you go do a quick outro here, and then uh, we'll catch up online later, I'm sure. Absolutely. Hey, party on, guys. So... Big day. First day of the XFL draft. That was the end of the first phase. We're going to end the stream here. Uh, we're going to do a post-draft stream tomorrow with the folks from the XF podcast, as well as Tron Hawkins from This Is the XFL podcast. I'm probably going to figure out the audio situation and use the lavalier mic tomorrow, so hopefully it's a little bit better. So sign everyone up. Thanks for joining, but before we let you go, if you didn't know, we're also on Facebook and Twitter, so make sure you give us a follow at XFL Newsroom. And since we're on YouTube, make sure you drop a like, comment, subscribe, and hit that bell to see when we're dropping new videos. Some are going to be pre-recorded, some are going to be live, just like this one. So until next time, oh yeah, sign you up. <laughs>